Welcome to the quarterfinal here between Veles and the Viper. In the blue, we have Veles playing as the Tatars. Interesting. And the Viper has gone for Huns. Oh boy, Cavalry Archer Bonanza incoming, y'all. This is gonna be good. Um, so of course, this is the quarterfinal. Both players making it to the final eight in the King of the Desert 4 tournament hosted by Mem. And if if the uh, the quarterfinals that have preceded these this one are anything of an indica indicator, then we will know that this uh, this quarterfinal is going to be a maze balls as well. Now, uh, as we have Veles coming forward, and Veles, wow, laming four goats there for the Viper, who is now down 400 food there. And that is a double whammy as well, because remember, Veles is Tatars. This is a lot of food for him to take. Because most villagers, right? I mean, most civilizations, uh, because of the rot on the, on, the, on the goats when you kill them, they don't actually get the 100 food, but Tatars get really close to it. You know, they actually get a little bit more than 100 food. So you get way more food uh, for sheep, which means that Veles can delay his farms now. He has a lot of for food under his DC now as a result. So this is, uh, that's good. That's some good laming right there. I'm not actually sure where does his where does all the goats there must have been it must have been viper's goats i'm not seeing any they, they have to be viper's goats to so less finding value for just going forward early uh to lame and yeah if you can get some goats from your opponent or herdables uh, as satars that is a great little eco bonus that you have and viper probably realizing he's been lame will probably push in his his uh zebra and ostrich uh, on this this side most likely yeah, Viper, I mean, he is scouted most of his base now. He sees no goats whatsoever. He probably knows. Okay, crap. I've been lamed. That's okay. That's okay. We got this. We'll, we'll balance out our economy by pushing in some deer, and then we're good that way as well. Now, um, between Huns and Tatars, right? Tatars want to go Cavalry Archers. Huns don't have to go Cavalry Archers, but in this matchup, you kind of want to go Cavalry Archers as well. So I expect Cavalry Archers from both players at some point in the Castle Age, if not at the start of it. You know, so we'll uh, probably see. Now, Huns have cheaper Cavalry Archers than uh, than uh, Tatars do, but the Tatars CA can, of course, sit on hills and then become way stronger than Huns CA because of the extra hill bonus that Tatars get when they sit on top of a hill. Killing Tatars on a hill? No, no. Big no, no. And if you get a castle up at some point, you can get Silk Armor, the Castle Age unique deck, which gives your uh, your Cavalry Archers one melee armor and two extra Pierce armor, making them very tanky. Alright, so far for that, I like the little ring actually, it is like a little bowl, right? It's like a little ring around your base, kind of the same for both players. Kind of like a little nest if you look at it. Uh, of course, it's not so nice if you're playing this and you're trying to defend your base as uh, Viper going for a Drush now. Down some food so he wants to delay Velez as much as he can. And Supreme Mill Drush, by the way, because there's no mill up just yet. As Viper is pushing in his hunt for the extra food, he's going to need it, of course, to get up. Now, Viper has... Viper has a, a, a mill as berries forward, as you can see. His main goal is kind of to the side, but not very safe because it's kind of beyond the wood lines. The wood lines are very close to the DC, which is kind of nice, right? It's kind of nice. Makes it more difficult to raid. But yeah, if you're going to wall, you'll have to wall all the way out here now to keep your gold uh, completely safe. But yeah, for the rest, all your wood lines are pretty safe then, uh, which is kind of nice. As Veles sees exactly where Viper is pushing in his hunt. And Veles, ooh, Veles seeing the barracks now, sees that the mill is only going up right now. That can only mean a drush. Can only mean a drush. Now, let me know, by the way, if yellow if yellow is not a color you can see on the minimap. Because that right there is a dead yellow dot moving across the minimap and it's barely visible. I can make Viper red, uh, if that is better. So just let me know. Also, mostly for me, because I have to be the one to actually look at the mini-map and see things. Uh, oh wait, I need to finish up. Uh, we have extra secondary golds forward for the Viper, so this uh, he actually does not have a lot of safe golds then. Yeah, no safe gold really for the Viper, so I'll have to defend it somehow. And unfortunately, this gold like, is very far forward. This is a nice DC spot though. This gold, middle of nowhere, not a nice DC spot. As we have a lion, nature giving Veles a little hand there. As Veles goes up, oops, to the, uh, goes up uh, with the, the fuel. Oh, actually, good, good idea. Yeah, he didn't know yet. He didn't know yet where Veles was. He was going to the top, but luckily for him, now finds this mining camp. So now he knows that Veles is there. Yeah, good call, good call. Yeah, he was indeed going uh, quite far north here before. If he had known where Veles was, he would have gone this way. But Viper, of course, spent a lot of time uh, pushing in his hunt. Didn't have time to scout really. As a result of that. 
that does delay your militia even more. And now the Tatar player is just going to be very happy and has... Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's like a little town. You have just have like a little herd of sheep that you could easily take whenever you want. Right, wherever you want. It's uh, probably going to be archers here from Veles, but he's probably not going to make a single farm until all these goats are gone. At least, at least that's what I would do. Unless you have more than six villages on the goats, at that point you can make farms. Uh, yeah, all these bar palisades are walled in pretty well. Viper, of course, not up in fuel just yet. It's still a minute and a half away, and Veles is looking, yeah, it's looking good here. Gets his, uh, his archer range up. It's just gonna get some archers out to stop this little drush. And the Viper, yeah, he had to make some farms to balance out his economy a little bit. It has clicked up now. Has clicked up now, but still, you know, you're delaying your opponent as much as you can. You know, that's the, at least the attempt here, but... You're never going to be able to do a lot of damage with two militia, right? I mean, players have actually managed to kill uh, villagers with a drush like this. But, yeah, it's it's difficult. And it's not meant to kill villagers anyways. It's meant to to delay as much as you can. Delay as much as you can. It's, yeah, no farms whatsoever for Blitz. Because you have all the food in the world. All the food in the world. Tatar is very happy. Now, um... Did I talk about Veles's base? I mean, we have a back gold-ish for Veles. It's kind of to the back. It's on a hill, though. I mean, uh, both players have that same problem. Berries to the back as well, which are still under siege. But, of course, they're a little bit less likely to get hit by your opponent. As the Viper drops up uh, an Arch Range and a Blacksmith at the same time. This is not Fast Castle. Don't worry about it. You do not have the food to do that. Not with four farms. Yeah, so Viper's just going to get his own Archers out. But probably will start with Skirmishers, honestly. Because you know, you know Veles is going to have a better army. And Viper actually spotted that army coming forward. So, yeah, first thing, Skirmisher. And then we'll go. And then we'll go for Archers. Because remember, Viper's gold is in a precarious position. It's not very safe. So if you get pushed off of that, no Archer production for you. So it's better to have some Skirmishers out then. As Veles' first Archer makes it to Viper's base. Of course, neither side has Fletching just yet. Militia are being pushed away from the wood line. Of course, Vila again, Militia, they're not very threatening, but there's a hole. Is the hole? Uh, uh. Okay, no. No hole. The Viper will be waiting for that. We'll be waiting for that. Yeah, of course, Velas could have sent that archer back to deal with the, the Drush, but the thing is, it's not doing that much damage anyway, so it's okay. It's okay, you don't have to worry so much about it. Uh, Viper just making some skirmishes now to push this initial attack back. And Veles will just have to ba back up, you know, gain his numbers again. And then come forward again, hopefully with Fletching, which he does have now. Viper doesn't have Fletching just yet, can't afford it. Um, Vil Militia still being, you know, they're not actually being annoying. They're mostly scouting at this point. Yeah, Viper's just scouting Veles' base as good as he can with his uh, Militia. Now coming forward with skirmishes as well. Alrighty. Well, we saw scouts so many times last time that I haven't even seen a whole lot of skirm play, ironically. From uh, from the previous set, I mean. As did you see? Did you see that? The, the, tar, uh, the archer was uphill from the skirmisher. Do you see how much damage that skirmisher took from the archer? That Tatar is right there. Do a lot of damage. If they're uphill, the Tatars do a lot better than they would do downhill. I mean, that's true for every civilization, but especially for Tatars. Yeah, his Viper's just running in here with all the military he has. But yeah, for less, adding a stable then, because he sees the skirmishers, makes scouts, and there you go. Of course, he had a lot of food left, you know, from the Dark Age because of all these goats. Look at that. Not a single farm. You don't need it. You don't really need it right now. I mean, at some point, you'll run out of food here, so you'll have to get farms that out then. Look how much wood he has as a result of that. Can he easily make farms with all these villages, whereas Viper has had to go for a lot of Dark Age farms here before he got the Horse Collar upgrade. There's some Dark Age farms in there for sure, but about half of them. As Veles' army of archers makes it into Viper's base, Viper tries to quick wall out this archer army, but in the end, Villager still goes down. Two villagers down, actually, for Viper. I think he lost one over here as well, the walling villager. As Veles is getting more value right now, snipes another villager. Three villagers down here for the Viper. And Veles is far ahead right now. As, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh oh, as Viper tries to quick wall out, to, uh, tries to quick wall out to archers, which succeeds, traps the archers for now. But Veles knows exactly where these are, where these village, where these villages are now, and he is like, let's get some damage done. As he is attacking at the same time on the other side, Viper trying to drop a, a, a an archer range on the front of his base, and Veles denying that for now. At the same time, these archers are, you know, running away. 
you know, and Viper's still not building a tower there, but might have to at some point because Veles knows about that gold now. He knows that you're taking that gold. As Ooh Spearman doing great, uh, doing a great job there against uh, against the scouts and Viper just defending himself from mainly with trash now. Also has another archer range up, very nice. That's three archer ranges. If he, you know, if you wanted to telegraph, you know, you couldn't telegraph to your opponent any more clear than this that you're going to go cavalry archers. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty clear. As for Velez, let's see, archer range going up as well. That's the second one, though, not the third, uh, but that will, of course, be a third. It will be cavalry archer be cavalry archer. And the question is, who's going to get up first here? It's uh, 15 on food for Velez, 13 on food for the Viper. It's 380 food for Vel 400 food, basically. 300 food for the Viper. So Velez is slightly ahead here slightly ahead had a lot of you know a lot of later investment in farms so you can get a lot more military out as a result and afford a stable afford a stable as well because normally you can't afford that because you don't have the wood because you're making farms but with the Taurus, if you have a lot of sheep you don't have to make farms nice snipe there for Veles sniping the spearman that's the dangerous thing because if the spearman goes down then he can engage against these skirmishers as a uh, scout goes down, the spearman goes down though, so now this scout gets to kill. So Veles sacrificing one of his scouts then uh, to kill the rest of these skirmishers. As now Viper bringing forward his archers and Veles will run away from that. And we still have a very eco even game, but no, I mean, not not too even though. I mean, look at the KD. Look at the Vil, the, the Vil uh, kill difference. Yeah, Viper a little bit on the back foot as Veles clicks up to the Castellates around 19 minutes is a pretty good time already. You know, anything before 20 minutes is a good Castellates time. At uh, 22 minutes is kind of the limit there. Viper's food count is slowly rising there, but he will be behind in the next stage. The army count not looking good for him as well. Only six archers on the field. Skirmishers keep dying to the scouts there. Yeah, the counter is gone and now Veles has an army superiority to Viper. As Viper now forced to make more skirmishers, which slows down your castle time. It slows down your castle time significantly for less on a minute and 30. And one thing that's important, right? That is important when you go cavalry archers, which both players are doing right now. Both players want to do that. It's timing. You have to be up as fast as you can because you need the time right to get ca out as uh Veles makes it to the base of the tower here viper trying to drop a tower on his gold it will go up so Veles will run away here losing two archers without getting too much value that's a good defense there for the viper but again very narrowly so he clicks up now but he's gonna be about two minutes behind uh to Veles, who has all the time in the world here to go for cavalry archers and by the time that Viper will be up and gets his upgrades, Veles will have like five cavalry archers out already. You know, you'll be ahead in the numbers, and it's all about numbers. All about numbers. So the snake, the snake is on the back foot here. Has to find a way back into this game. Now, all in cavalry archers is a way back. You know, you are basically all in now because uh, the stone has been spent on the tower. As Viper still fighting his way up the hill as well. Veles, though, has the hill. Tatar is on the hill. Again, don't, you don't want to fight that. As Veles is going to get crossbows first. I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Because there's no reason to not upgrade your archers from Feudal Age. You get Thumb Ring for free, right? As soon as you hit the Castle Age. And then at the crossbow upgrade, you can do a lot of damage with those. You do damage with them. And then you switch into Cavalry Archers. Which is the superior unit, of course, for Tatars. Especially since you don't get Arbalest. Word of Grey coming in. Yeah, Viper is going to have to defend himself for a while. As, as the faster castles for Veles. Gives him about a minute and a half of window here. To maybe do some damage and break in. And, you know, do something. As Viper has a lot of skirmishes around, actually. As Velez runs right through the town center, right in the back of Viper's base, has abandoned all these wood lines. So much idle time generated now because of this. Viper now making it to Castle himself. He's probably going to get the Elite Skirm upgrade as well, but nine Elite sk with a line Skirmish Drift, probably. Let's see, Vodka Arrow first, that's what he wanted to get. Uh, doesn't quite have the resources. He doesn't have the wood to get any other upgrade. He doesn't have the wood to get the Elite Skirm upgrade right now. Yeah, so the crossbows for the Tatar player are still doing a great job. And Vipers had to back up twice now to the forward wood line, which is not your ideal wood line. Uh, Skirmish is coming out as well for Veles, who's not making cavalry archers. That's interesting. It's interesting. Like, I was one... He got bloodlines, right? So it looks like he was going to go for CA. But I guess for now, he's more interested in adding a TC here and booming and getting some economy going. There's only two archer ranges for him. Uh, maybe I'll get a th drop a thir third one, but of course going CA is very expensive uh, for here, for uh, Veles. Not so much for the Viper, it's cheaper, but the Viper has a very, very fragile economy. 56% of worker efficiency. 
Not very good. That means your villagers are not working half the time. Basically. As Velez is like, well, you need those farms. Do you need those farms? You need those farms? Oh, that's nice. And snipes a few farms using the Tatar Hill bonus as well. You really quickly get the farms uh, down. Yeah, Velez is in a great position, man. A great position. 44 to 42 villagers, you know. Slightly more villagers for uh, for Velez. Velez also has wheelbarrow. Viper does not have that upgrade. So that vill difference is actually bigger than it seems. Because Velez also got four villager kills. Viper got zero. So right now, the snake is forced to defend himself in the back of his base without uh, full upgrades on his skirmishes. So that's not ideal for him. Doesn't have skir doesn't have ballistics either, which Velez does as well. Viper microing against it though. Very nice micro from him, but that can only be done so much. As Velez also microing himself, only loses one crossbow. Two skirmishes going down for the Viper. Viper also sending his first cavalry archers to the front here, so he wants to get some uh, damage in. Oh, the crossbows though get slaughtered by the skirmishes and the back and look players are microing they're fighting over here viper sending a raid forward as well Ooh, hole hole <gasps> oh it's not a hole it's not a hole and Velez actually sees it great reaction time there for Velez. remember still fighting in the front who would be paying attention to that like if i were fighting like this i would not be paying attention to my own base that's for sure and viper says g g he sees, he sees the multiple TCs, or at least he will probably expect the multiple TCs from Velez. He knows Velez is far ahead, and Viper just can't get the freaking cavalry archers out. And the first game goes to Velez. What a great game. Really well played by Velez. Despite that rush from the Viper, Velez, with the early archer damage, got a whole lot done. I mean, there was a lot of fighting going on, but Velez snuck around with four archers, managed to get in through the walls, and delayed Viper big time. Big time. Force a tower up at some point over here as well. And then just never leaving the place. Never leaving the place. Viper was on one wood line. A tower on stone. Uh, gold, I mean. Trying to make cavalry archers, but they just didn't have the numbers. And Viper's like, yeah, uh, screw this game. This is not looking good for me. Let's just go to a second game. It's still, it's a best of seven. We have plenty of opportunity here. But Veles, with some strong play there, takes the first game. That's right, so just good stuff. Good stuff. I want the Tatar the hill board is probably helping a lot. They were fighting a lot around hill. And look at the KD. Look at that KD. You know, Velas kept hanging out on hills, getting way more kills that way. 45 to 16. Great stuff. And the army high was the same, so you know that the fights were significantly better for Velas. Also had more economy as well. Yeah, significantly more food actually. Look at that. That's a big difference right there. Uh and then Vil count, yeah, was uh, very much ahead. About six villagers. That would have gotten worse and worse as well. Uh, GG, and wow, both players actually around the same level of speed there. Velez also with the peaks, and both uh, both him and Viper. Good stuff, man, good stuff. GG. Oh, first game going to Velez. I must say, I'm a, a slightly surprised, you know, like, uh, I mean, the Viper still, still, I still consider Vi Viper the favorite to win this game, but Velez showing, showing me and showing the rest of the world that just because Viper is the favorite doesn't mean that Viper is going to slaughter and destroy Velez because Velez is looking strong, he's looking clean, he's looking strategical, methodical, and he is doing a great job right now. So, Viper's going to have to up his level a big time here. Like, he can't, he can't just uh, troll his way through this quarterfinal, you know, like he uh, sometimes does in the lower st uh, stages of a tournament, you know, when the players he meets are just at a lower level than him. That's, yeah. But not around. He can't be messing around now. No Vietnamese bands this time for the Viper because he has to up his level to beat Velez. Looking really good. Let's see, do we have game two? We have game two, so let's go to the second game then. Uh, and then after that, I'll, you know, sometime I'll show the draft. Maybe they have some speculate and I will show the draft for sure. So we'll see. Let me get into the game first and then we will know. Uh, there we go. Let's spectate. Perfect. And how much speculate we have? Um, 38 seconds. Just enough time for me to show the draft. Here you go. Alright, so a loss for the Viper with, uh, with uh, Hans. We have a win for Veles with the Taurus. Alrighty. Yeah, and again, I don't really know what, you know, I don't really want to speculate on the civilizations because, again, you know, it's it's difficult to guess what we're going to get. Viper, though, probably not going to go for Mongols after this one, you know, pro or unless he wants to double down the cavalry archers, I guess. But less, I can see him go for a cavalry sieve here, maybe. But, I, I mean, again, that's just, just a guess. Uh, basing that on absolutely nothing. We don't have enough information yet. 
Let's see. Back to lays over. Let's get into the second game. And let's see what we get. Oh, let's make sure we don't speed up here. Perfect. Alrighty. Welcome to the second game between Veles and the Viper. The Viper here has gone for Japanese. Interesting. Japanese for the Viper. And Veles has countered, or at least is, is countering this with, uh, with Saracens. An interesting civilization matchup for sure. Now, both of these civilizations are very versatile. That's kind of what they have in common, actually. Both Japanese and Saracens have a rather open tech tree. Saracens actually have the most open tech tree of the entire of any civilization in the game, I think. The only thing they really miss is heavy cavalry. They don't have uh, cavalier and they don't have paladin, obviously. So, but for the rest, they get most, if not uh, pretty much every upgrade. So, so Saracens, of course, because of that and because of their market bonus, can do literally anything. As oh, Veles is eating two sheep at the same time. Oh God! Nah, it was just it was just a coincidence. That's what happened. What happened there is that once you have five villagers on goats, that's when the first goat will almost run out. And then if you make a second villager, in most cases, by the time it comes out, the villager already go to the next goat so what you can do is put your garrison point on the second goat and then the first villager just goes to the second goat already right that's definitely possible as Velez brings in the bo brings in the rhino already interesting i mean normally you would do that to uh, to avert uh, uh, your opponent from laming you and if you have a, a, a rhino r very far forward and we know that viper likes his lames here and there uh you know so, I mean, that's just to keep it safe. Otherwise, the best order, of course, is to first go to wood, then go to rhinos. You know, I think in general. Unless, of course, you have a different bolt order with it. If you're Mongols, there is a case to be made for doing stuff like this. So you can get a really fast rush out or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, ask a pro player. Ask a pro player. Anyways, three on wood for the Viper for now. If he sends another one to wood, that will probably be something like Archer's Man at Arms or something like that, but I don't think so. I think it's three on wood, so probably going to be Scouts for the Viper then. Something that Vilas did see, so he might get an idea. But again, just because it's three on wood now doesn't mean that they can't adapt. Like, that's what pros are good at as well. You know, they have a build order, but they don't have to stay with it, you know? It's like, it's like learning an instrument, right? First, you can only play from sheet music. You have to follow the notes exactly. And the better you get at your instrument, at some point you can start improvising and completely uh, lose, you know, s stay away from uh, what the notes on this, on your sheets. At least that's, uh, <laughs> that's how it, it ended up for me. Of course, then the risk is that you end up not being able to, re to not being able to follow the rules anymore. I don't know. That's just, I guess that's just me. I have to improvise now. Anyways, I'm rambling. Let's have a look at the, at the player bases here. We have a giant wood line for Veles on this side. That's a beautiful wood line that we'll use as a wall. Wall right there, and bam, you have a giant wall on the top side of your base. Perfect. You can wall this front. It's quite open. This front is not as open. So I guess Veles' base, not too bad. Not too bad indeed. Has some uh, uh, some gold in the back as well. Some goats he missed. Some extra gold out there. Uh, he's probably going to fight those goats right now. Stone on here, gold forward though. That's a tricky gold to town center. I guess TC has to go up right there if you want a lot of wood line and the gold. Stone forward though. Um, which, you know, sometimes getting mining stone and uh, mining stone to sell or mining gold to just buy resources. But Saracens is something you can do. If you know how to use the market, Saracens are a great sieve. As for the Viper, we got a berries forward, as was the case for Veles, by the way. We have uh, nice wood lines as well. That's easy to wall off as well. So you have a nice little wall on the front of your base. You wall off the right side and then most of your base is already pretty safe. Uh, then, uh, you know, we have some extra gold forward, but the main gold is to the back. So at least you have a safe main gold, but if you want to expand to other golds, a DC here would be really nice. Uh, extra gold out here, extra gold out there. Right? Alrighty. Um, yeah, player's probably going to go up to the few lates in a second here. I can't imagine it's going to be uh, terribly weird stuff going on right now. Both players just kind of scouting. I mean, Veles has already been at Viper's base, but he's just going to go for a second round to see what is Viper actually doing. What are we seeing here? I'm seeing a barracks right now. I'm seeing a barracks. He's still making villagers going to gold. Is that men at arms? Is that going to mean men at arms? Because if it's straight archers, you don't actually have to put the barracks up uh, that early, right? You don't have to do that. Uh, you know, you have to at some point build the barracks so you can build the archer range. But the re the real reason, right, to get the barracks up first is so that you can start making men at arms while you go up to the field late. So let's see if he's going to get a uh, uh, militia out in a second here. Yep, there you go, there you go, there you go. 
Getting his first militia out already, very nice. So it is going to be men at arms then for the Viper. Now remember, Japanese men at arms are sick. Absolutely insane. And Velez, he's walling up a little bit. I really wish he would wall like this, not, not to his gold. But, you know, it's more efficient that way, that's true. Uh, he's, of course, on his wood line because it's a really nice wood line. Why would you not use that wood line, right? Um... Uh, What's Velez doing? Well, he's up already, so I think it's just going to be scout stem for him. He's not on gold. He didn't take any gold. He's only dropping that barracks right now. So it's going to be scouts from him versus men-at-arms. But Japanese men-at-arms are very good. Very strong. Very strong. As Viper is chasing down the Ceres and scouts, Velez taking the hill bonus. Maybe can turn around to attack. But also, can just wait 10 seconds. We'll be in fuel leads faster than the Viper because, of course, the scout build is faster than the man at arm build. Now Velez can turn around and Viper has to run away. But the thing is, he's not in fuel leads, so he can't run away as fast. So Viper is going to lose some HP. He's running to a hill right now. If we can get the hill down, maybe he can do some damage. But Velez is like, nah, -uh, mate. Nah, -uh. Viper's still doing the, trying to do as much damage as he can, running back home now to the man at arm which Veles now sees. Hadn't scouted that yet, I don't think so. Now he knows that's coming, uh, so at least he won't be surprised by that anymore. Archer range going up for Veles already. You know, that's... Uh Wait, wait a second, that wasn't the plan, was it? Okay, so Velez adapting then here, or at least he's gonna go straight archers, but was a little bit late to the gold then. Like, normally you would send your villagers to gold, right, to have some, mine some gold in the meantime, while, uh, while you go up. So you have enough gold to produce a whole bunch of archers when you get there. But yeah, I mean, that might have been the plan all along then. I mean, Veles was up uh, a little bit later than a normal scout build. Anyways, yep, men-at-arms breaking through, breaking through palisade walls quite quickly. These are Japanese men-at-arms. They attack faster because they are Japanese. Uh, you know, so these these palisade walls will go down quite fast. And actually, this one villager struggling, struggling to repair this by himself. I think slowly, but sure, yeah, slowly the HP is going down, actually. In fact, do you see that? Now it, we're, we're below 200 now, so it slowly is going to go down, but it's not fast enough for the Viper. This Veles is walling here. Now, of course, because he walled like this, this gold is easily rangeable by enemy archers, which Viper has on the field and is sending for it right now. So Viper is looking to do some damage to Veles this time around. You know, this time he wants to take the initiative, and Japanese men at arms are very strong. But you cannot let those in. Don't let those in. Because Japanese men at arms, they kill villagers. They get buildings down much quicker as well. So, uh, yeah. And the Viper probably knows that he's not going to get a whole lot of damage right now as he's trying to kill a lion without without fletching, which he should probably get uh, sooner rather than later. No blacksmith yet for him. Actually, he does have a blacksmith. Okay, we'll get, he'll get fletching as soon as he can afford it. Which is right now, but he still needs to make villagers. Army coming forward, Veles is scouting around. He's just going to keep his base protected for now. Men at arms still hanging around on the right somewhere. Oh, there they are. There they are. It's difficult to see on a mini map, man. The yellow, man. It's really difficult to spot. But I don't want to change the color because it's it's Viper. It's it's his color, right? Yeah. Although I have been changing the color for other players as well. So I guess fair is fair. But yeah, some, some color matchups just don't match. Like blue and teal. Eey, that doesn't work. Does not work. Or like purple and red also no big no no doesn't work either as ooh Veles selling a stone here buying food right now interesting i mean that's not to go and click out the castle days because he is not by far doesn't have the food he's long away from the food uh, requisite to click up to the castle here or did he actually buy himself up i don't think so i don't think so so Veles actually selling a stone here to buy food so he can keep his dc rolling so he can get more uh, military out so it's a, it's a desperate situation indeed it's uh, not the best scenario for him and uh, Velez, of course, uh, I mean, Viper, will, of course, will have his stone. He will be very happy with that. Although, of course, there's no way for him to know unless he checks the market. Unless he checks the market. Now, remember that uh, that uh, Saracens get the best price, right? Get the best price uh, possible for selling their stone. So if you're going to sell with any zip with Saracens, that will be the way to go. Well, Viper, m m moving home a little bit. And as Velez is buying food again. Again. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, again, again, with 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 Saracens, you can get away with that for uh for the most part. But as you can see, the price rises quite steeply as soon as you do that. You know, so it's not it's again not ideal. Much better, much better uh to have uh 
uh, to just get the food through farming, of course. So we have a little engagement here in the middle. We have a scout for the Viper that is still left over from the Dark Cage. Of course, he cannot really get close here. As Valesi is selling everything he has. He wants to get the cast slates. He does not feel comfortable in the situation that he is right now. Viper putting a whole lot of pressure on him. Also doing a great job microing down these skirmishes. Although Valesi is doing a great job microing as well. Viper, though, sending in his... his Sending in his, his, his men at arms now as well, which now gets sniped by Valesa's archers. Valesa's splitting up his units as well. He's working with two control groups there, you know, in order to uh, to keep his archers safe while the skirmishers get, get, get kills and tank shots. The Viper is aware of that. He wants to kill those archers. He wants to get the archers. Valesa is getting close. He's getting close, right, to the castellate, but not quite there yet. He's sold a whole lot of stuff to get there. Sold a whole lot of stuff to get there. He's busy micring, still buying, and there he goes. There he goes at 70 minutes and 20 seconds. Not the best castle time in the world, of course, but it will be it will be significantly faster than Viper's castle time because Viper making skirmishes is adding his farming economy. 19 farms. Great Scots. That's a lot of farms. Really good. You know, so at least a Viper should be able to click up very soon here. Should be able to click up very soon. But soon. How soon is now? You know. Is it soon enough? Uh, because uh, Valesa is already up, you know, and Viper's going to be slightly behind here. Wouldn't surprise me if Viper also sells some stuff, maybe to click up faster. But he doesn't have a market yet, so I guess Viper not going to use the market. He's just going to get up in due time. You know, Valesa is, after all of this, a little bit behind. He has some idle TC time from both players. Uh, but Viper is still two villages ahead. Wait, how did that happen? How did that happen? Is there no ego kills? More idle TC time? Hmm. No. And uh, oh, wait, oh wait, because the, the castle is upgrade. I always forget, man. I always forget. Is that a hole? No, that's not a hole. No, it's not a hole. Lucky for Valesse. But now you see that the well, you know, you see the downside of walling to your gold like this is that your opponent can sit right on your gold, and you'll now have to kill. Uh, you now have to kill that. Problem is that Valesse is still busy dealing with the skirmishers here from the Viper. And yeah, the Viper is happily sitting on your gold. And gold is so essential, man. It's so essential. Archer going down. Villagers still de trying, to, trying to take some gold desperately for their masters. But uh, yeah, Viper is... Uh, it's, uh, yeah, he's very happy here. He's very happy to just sit here. You know, surprising he hasn't killed a single villager just yet. As a skirmisher getting an archer kill at some point at least. Viper's still being annoying, but yeah, he's just gonna run away now. He knows that gold is exposed, you know, he can go back. Remember, players are also micring at the same time on the left, right? Which we can't really... It's hard to observe, of course, because we have to look at two things at the same time, which we... I mean, I'm not even sure how they do it, but of course they do it uh, routinely. Very good. As in the end, Valesse ends up getting the better, uh, the better of this engagement here. Now, let's see what Viper is gonna do here. Oh, whoops. Viper dropping an extra archer range is making more crossbows. Is up to cast slaves. You know he will be there in a minute and a half, right? Uh, a minute and a half, and it's going to be crossbows for him. Valesse also is going to stick with crossbows. He's going to get fast ballistics as well. So he's basically all in right now. I wonder if micro at the highest level will ever evolve to the point you can split your archers into control groups of seven, six to seven archers per group and sniping three, four villages at the same time with one group of archers. That is a lot of micro, man. That is a lot of micro. And you know what? What? What you already see sometimes. What happens is that when uh, when you see an archer fight, right? Like there there comes a time when if you have too many archers, and I know is there such a thing as too many archers? If your ball of archers becomes too big, and if you if you focus fire with that, you don't you actually do too much damage. It's like an overkill, right? So what a lot of pros do, they will just like take archers and take parts of it, right? And they just right click with that so that they attack at different times, and you get a lot a lot more damage per second and a lot less overkill that way. So that is, uh, yeah, that is already a good way to do it. But yeah, with control groups, I think maybe, like, we could ask Leary if he could do it. As yeah, the Viper makes it to cast slates as well. Just going to upgrade his archers, although archers can fight crossbows no problem. That's not a problem after all. And it's not a not a good fight for them. Less range, less attack, right? It's not, it's not a deal, but they can. They can. Uh, Viper has kept his army alive for now. Velez, of course, with the faster, the faster castellate, uh, you know, is, is, is at least has uh, uh, kept the pressure off his main base now, is sending skirmishers forward, right, uh, to, uh, well, to, start, to get some advantage over the Viper, who is been has been making a lot of, uh, of archers himself. So Viper responds, sees the elite skirms, says, okay, okay, we're both going to make elite skirms then. And yet another trash war. <laughs> 
as Veles continues to buy uh, resources here, as you can see. Again, this is what Saracens, right, what they can do. You can actually buy uh, resources, and there is a point where I, early on, when you haven't used the market a lot, when you haven't abused the market, really, uh, when it is actually better to just sell, uh, uh, buy gold, and then, no, no, get gold, and then just buy your resources, with it, or sell stone, or something like that. Like, it's, it's more efficient, actually, than just chopping and farming the resources yourself. But only to a certain point, right? Once the, once the price goes above a certain level, at that point, no longer the case. Viper's still skirmishing with this little army on the front, at the same time sending over an army to the right, because he knows, he knows that gold is there. Ballistic's about to come in for the Viper as well. Oh, the timing is great, but Veles has a skirmisher posted there. So Veles will now know about this. Yeah, he saw this. He saw it, so now he will know. He will know that he's going to have to do something on the right here. He's going to wall this in, and is he going to drop a tower or a town center or something? Uh, town center wouldn't go up anymore. He has to do something right now. Velez, his army sending a mechanel that way as well. His army's on the front still dealing with Viper. Uh, who has uh, actually lost a bunch of units there. And they're just fighting over there. And there comes the crossbow army. The Velez is gold. It's his only save gold right now. Has to leave that gold. One villager down. For the first villager killed for the Viper. Another villager down as well. Now a mechanel, uh, you know, that will be chasing his army down again. Another villager down as well. Viper getting a bunch of hill kills. And that is good stuff. Good stuff. As the Viper has to abandon his base. And it's just going to run home. At the same time, Velez though. Breaking into the Viper's base with a small little army there. A uh, Viper at the same time dropping a, uh, a town center on the wood line here, deleting his lumber camp as well. Veles can't stop that. He's still busy running away from these skirmishers. At the same time, ooh, we have a little fight in the middle. Viper still splitting away from the Manganel. Manganel on 33 HP. So Veles sending over a few repair vills to keep that up. Of course, when there's repair vills, it's very difficult to kill a Manganel with archers. So instead, uh, uh, Viper's just going to run away. Uh, at the same time, has to keep Velez out of his woodline, but Velez is kind of stuck here now. He can't get in as Viper actually deletes the houses to let the skirmishers in. Let them in. Uh, don't let them in. They can still kill villagers. A few villagers going down there on the woodline. And the eco could be now 10 to 5 in a favor for the Viper, who is also getting... Oh, got rocked! Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's uh, let's rewatch that for a second. Uh, da -da 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 as Viper, kapow, kapow. Ooh, was looking at the back of his base. And as you can see, that did not end up being well here for crossbows. Who did get two kills, but still. Uh, two vills would be fine, too. Uh, Valencia's forward army now dead. So look at the army count. 29 to 10. But the villager count is very similar. 47 to 45. It's because Valencia has been on one town center. And Viper has been on one town center. That is different though. Now because the Viper has a second town center. He's going to be able to add more vills. And probably another TC going up on this side. At least that's what I would do. Or maybe a TC on this side to keep your right side safe. Interestingly too. Viper with Japanese is... Uh, Getting himself some stables up. And uh, Veles just bought himself a town center. Because he knows this stone not very safe. This gold de de definitely not safe. He's going to drop a TC. I mean I would have put it right there. But I mean that's just me. Ooh but Viper coming in with a little army. I think I think Veles should be able to defend here. He has enough skirmishes out. Has, to, has a manganel out as well. Yep that's on its way. And Viper yeah he's taking the fight a little bit. But losing the crossbows already. Yeah he's just going to have to run away. At the same time being annoying on the right, and Veles is like four manganels out in the second here. He's making a lot of manganels right now. A lot of manganels to deal with this. And the Viper's like, that is cute, those manganels of yours. I am going to send in the cavalry. And this one knight will be d p perfectly capable of killing this manganel. There you go. Boom. There goes one manganel. Another manganel could go down as well. Now Veles knows that he's going to need some crossbows on the field as well to deal with these knights. Because they might not have any upgrades, but skirmishes and manganels are not the way to go against knights. Not, at least, uh, not without uh, good micro. So you have an attack route now for Veles. Wanted to get uh, maybe another knight kill, but now just two knights again. Oh, a shot. Oh, great attack route there for Veles. Getting a bunch of kills there on Viper's military. Great stuff there. Both the knights go down as well, and Viper probably has to leave the middle. Or at least back up a little bit there. Uh, dodging a shot a little bit. Playing with his, li with his life here. Yeah, Veles is pushing out with the Manganels. Now, at the same time, Viper is indeed getting that town center up in the spot that I suggested. Like, right here on this gold. On the wood line as well. Very nice. Um, yeah, the house right now for the Viper, which he doesn't need. It's mostly vision, really. 
Valesse again, look at the economy for Valesse. It's not really good. And that's one thing, right? Valesse is all in uh, for the most part. He still need. Oh, okay, he's not all in anymore because he's adding that third down center now. But he is... His economy is very fragile. Like, it's only a seven villager difference, but the economy for the Viper is much stronger, much, much more robust than his uh, Valesse's economy because he's had more villagers working for a longer time. That's how it works, after all. We have a, a monastery now going up, so Vales can make a knight, so he can uh, convert the uh, the knight, of course. Knights without upgrades, not too good there. Yeah, those upgrades uh, only now coming in. Too late to save those knights, of course. So yeah, the mangonel will stay up for now because there's enough crossbows now for Vales to deal with this. Uh, what's going on in the back here? Okay, it's just skirmishes. Never mind. That's not it. That's not important. Viper's army is just running around, seeing if it can do some damage from the left side, maybe. Uh, yeah, for less for now, he's still alive, right? He's still alive. He's making villagers. It's 63 to 59 villagers. Viper has some more idle TC time. You know, he's been getting a lot of upgrades. He's getting a lot of upgrades that cost food. So he doesn't really have the food to keep all his TCs running. So that's, uh, yeah, six minutes of idle TC time. Less so far for less, but he has less. Of course, he also had less TCs to idle. So that definitely helps. As Veles saves the villagers, so Viper in the end does not get those kills. But yeah, just harassing a little bit, idling eco. And Veles, you know, continuously sending army back uh, to defend himself. He's not really pressuring the Viper. And Viper, since that one counterattack, hasn't really been attacked anymore. As uh, we have a Manganel defending a woodline right now. And Viper losing a crossbow to that. One crossbow very weak right now as a result of that. Uh, Viper trying to break through here, but Valesse is going to housewall that out. The Manganel is still there to protect, although it's pathing around now because it's trying to hit uh, the crossbow. As Viper runs away with his knights, the knights are new, now have uh, decent upgrades, actually. Uh, upgrades enough, at least, to fight underneath this. As Viper is also fighting on the left, bringing an army from the left as well. And Valesse is just kind of surrounded on this hill right now, losing units everywhere. Nice shot there on uh, the crossbows for Viper. And Viper is attacking from all places, but if you're attacking from all places, you have to micro all places as well, which is challenging. It's challenging. And Viper right now uh, decided to, uh, to go home, drop his own siege workshop. To get his own mangonels out. You know, you get your own mangonels out. And that way you can defend yourself against the mangonels from Veles. That makes sense to me. Now the Viper are 78 villagers now. But Veles is uh, close behind that. Uh, although Veles is... Yeah, he has some idle TC time here and there. Of course, you know, he's buying a stone. Oh, I see. He's built on stone for a castle. He's going to drop that on the left now. Very nice. Keep your left flank safe a little bit. It's a nice defensive castle to protect. The most important part of Valesca's economy, right there. It's a lot of villages right here. I mean, you have the center. That's true. You have some villages over here, which are taking gold inefficiently, I might I add. As Ooh, the Viper bringing forward a large host of, of, of crossbows, it's, uh, supported by knights as well, which of course is dangerous too. The siege is dangerous too, the skirmishes, although there's not a lot of skirmishes here anymore. Both players opting to go for gold units instead of trash units now, as Veles buying a whole lot of food. It's this dude trying to go to Imperial Age again. As we have a shot now with the Manganel from the Viper. Another shot on the Manganel. Oh, Viper gets a shot. Oh, narrowly missing Veles' troops here. Dodges the shots for now. Shoots. Oh, but misses. Not in time. Fortunately for him. Uh, uh, oh, Viper. Actually, Veles getting a few conversions then on the Knights for Viper. These must be Viper's Knights looking at the upgrades. Yeah, there's no way that Veles made those Knights. And Veles getting two conversions as well. Definitely nerfing Viper a little bit because Viper wanted to get the siege down. That's not going to happen right now. Veles is definitely trying to get at the Empire. Look at that. Look at those resources. But the problem is that Viper's economy, again, like I said, very robust. And Viper's resources are climbing as well. He has the goal to buy himself up right now. Yeah, but Viper noticing that Veles, that's what Veles is doing. So he's just going to counter exactly what Veles is doing. And boom, both players up the Imp, which should favor the Viper because he has a better economy right now. Knights raiding the gold on the right as well. Very nice. Getting some more idle time from Veles, uh, you know, his economy is significantly less efficient than Viper's economy. Because Viper's economy has been untouched. It's been untouched. He does not have to have to worry about uh, about being raided here. Gonna get a castle up on a nice hill. What a great castle that is. On stone, in front of your gold, your farms, your TCs, your wood lines. Perfect. Perfect castle. You know, the other side, there's not a whole lot to castle, actually. But maybe a castle up... Uh, Maybe in your town or maybe on a hill like this, like say a hill from here to push your opponent from, really nice. This hill is pretty nice too, but there's a siege workshop right next to it, so that's kind of risky. Anything else could pop out of that one at any time. 
And this is uh, evidently going late. As well as going out here to the gold, which is a risky gold, especially when the Viper, who did did scout the gold, is checking right now if Velez is there. And Velez has to send so many villagers away from this. Three villagers down already. A fourth one probably going to go down as well. Yep, there she goes. Another one going down. Kabow! Five villagers down. Six villagers down. Six villagers down. Very nice there for the Viper, who is a better eco KD than Velez does. As a result, it's about 15 villagers ahead. Yeah, it's just really good. It's just really good for the Viper. He's playing strong right now. Like the first game, he looked a little bit shaky right at the start. But let's got the better of him. But this time, this is top tier Viper, man. You know, like, he, like Viper isn't the kind of player that necessarily has to rush you to death and go with, you know, kill you with ultra aggression and really fast, fast, fast. Now, Viper is the kind of player who's very strategic, very methodical, building his economy, macroing like a god, and not taking any damage while doing so. And then just... Finishing you off with superior economy and, and strategy. Yes, yeah, so we have Imperial Age now as well for uh, for the Viper. Both of them reaching at about the same time, getting their upgrades and things like that. And uh, yeah. Now Saracen Archers do have one advantage over uh, over um, uh, over Japanese Archers, which is that Saracen Archers can kill buildings with their extra attack versus buildings, which you can see. The rolling attack three, which is pretty sweet actually. It, it gives you just enough extra damage to really shred buildings with R Blast and Chemistry. It's really good. Because you do 13 attack, which is really solid. In case, ooh, Viper bringing a small army in here, getting the R Blast upgrade as well. Has, I mean, has Ballistics already. It's going to be attacking from the front at the same time as he brings in these arbalets in the back. He's waiting for it. He's waiting for it. He knows. But first what I do here, I attack at the front. Distract Veles's attention. I need to get Veles's attention here. Yeah, Veles sending military over right now. And Viper, as soon as that happens, now he knows Veles will be looking at the front here. He'll be looking at this, sensing the army. But oh, Veles is paying attention to the minimap. I mean, despite his fast reaction, he's still going to lose a bunch of villagers there. It's not pretty, but at least... At the very least, he did see it, but Veles, he yeah, he just doesn't believe in the position he has. Like Viper, better economy, Veles is embattled from every side. You know, we're gonna lose a bunch of villages on the wood line here as well. And Veles deciding it is GG, the snake has bested me in its archer war. And the snake taking the third game. Whoops. GG! Yay! And you're using the emote. Awesome. I mean, that's what it's for, right? That's what it's for. G to the G. That was a really solid game. I mean, a, a bit of a slower game, right? Less was happening. Like, players... That's because players played it more safe, right? Like, despite Veles really abusing that market a lot, he was still making an economy. He was still trying to macro his way up the imp as well. Uh, he wasn't actually all in for most of that. You know, he was mostly all in to stave off the pressure in early cast slates, really. But yeah, Viper just... You know, as a result, right? It's always what you got to ask yourself. If you are defending really well and not taking a whole lot of damage, if you're not moving out yourself, your opponent has the best defense possible. Not being attacked, right? Not taking any damage whatsoever. So Viper's economy is just better. It's just better. But let's keep having to put out fires. And that's, uh, that's how you do it. Slow down your opponent, get a lead, and snowball that lead. And that's what would have happened in a second here. In any case, GG is all around. Let's have a look at the statistics. We can probably see the KD as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, better for the Viper overall. Yeah, there's also a lot of villager kills uh, included in that. So it's not like the micro battles were necessarily in Viper's favor everywhere. I think overall he was he did have the better uh, a better place there. And also way more military created there uh, than Veles did. It's also just because he had a better economy for most of it. Look, look at that. Yeah, more resources collected for uh, for, uh, for Viper, I mean. Had more villagers for most of that as well. Uh, you know, so that's a lead right there. And that's how you do it. It looks... He makes it look easy. He makes it look easy. But it's not easy. It, it, but he makes it look that way. Now, it's just Viper things, man. You know, you just... You just chill, you boom, and you, you don't take damage while doing it. He is the ultimate greedy player. And again, I call it greedy because normally you should not be able to get away with stuff like that. But then if you're a good player like the Viper, you can. You totally can. So we call it still we call it a greedy snake, but hey, in Age of Empires, great greed is good. Not so much in the real world, but in Age of Empires, greed is good. The motto of the 80s, right there. Alrighty. Well, we have a, a ourselves a tie and we have ourselves a series. I mean, I would have expected no less from this. 
uh, from these two players to be tied all the time, just like the last quarterfinal. So let's uh, go to the third game then, which I'm pretty sure we have the link for already. Yep, there we go. So let's get into that game, shall we? will only take a second and let's see what the players have gone for um you know in turn what civilizations they have picked let's see uh there will probably be some spec delay so we might get to look at the draft here then maybe no guarantees though no nope, no spec delay okay well no spec delay then so in that case we will go straight into the game uh yeah, which is uh, totally fine as well. And let's go. Poof. There we go. Perfect. Welcome to the third game between the Viper and the Less in the yellow. We have Viper going for Mongols. Ooh, interesting. I love it. And then we have Khmer for, uh, for, for Less. Hmm. Hmm. Who do we favor here then? Because I like Mongols better as a Sith. But Castellage for Khmer can be better than the Vi than, than for Mongols. I mean, remember, Khmer actually get an eco bonus in Castellage. Mongols do not. So I'm not sure about that. As Viper stealing some goats there and now engaging against Veles. And Veles already had more HP and lost more HP on his scout. So he's stealing one goat back and the Viper doesn't want to lose his goats. Uh, we have ourselves a, uh, have ourselves a little uh, a little laming war here. As Viper really wants these goats. He's like, these goats are mine. I want these goats. You still have to, you still owe me. You still owe me. As Veles now steals the goats back and Viper might just kill them then. Or not. Is he gonna kill them? No, he still he wants the goats. He wants the goats. The snake. He wants these goats. He's like, these are my goats. See, they're yellow. They're my goats. Mine. Go away. My goats. <laughs> oh, viper. You you do know that you don't get a hurt a, a hurtable bonus, right? You're not Britons. As is still like, no, these are my goats. Give my goats back. I mean, at this point, right? You just kill him. <laughs> these goats are so. These goats must be so confused right now, right? Switching colors all this time, and then Velez is like, okay, screw it. I'm gonna run away and kill this goat. So Viper, in the end, gets one goat. Actually, that's Velez's goat still. <laughs> that was really funny. That was really funny. Yeah, Viper, of course, has enough HP on the scout. He could still go for a lame if he wanted to, but it is risky because Velez, of course, is wise to that. He knows, right? And Velez has already brought in one of his rhinos, and it wouldn't surprise me if he's going to do the same thing uh, over there. He sees those goats over there, and he wants to have those goats as well. Yep, those are my goats. Let's bring them in. Velez is going to sit around this rhino. He's like, yeah, you're not going to get this rhino, mate. I know you're Mongols. I know you get your hunt bonus, but it's not going to happen. Just don't try it. And Viper, of course, he's not going to be that foolish. He's going to go run right home. And what he's going to do instead, he's going to go, uh, well, collect his own goats. And he's going to push in some hunt. Like this hunt, maybe. It's kind of, kind of far away. I must say, hunt in Canada Desert 4 spawns pretty far away from your base. So it's, uh, I mean, Slam won't mind because he, of course, uh, can push in deer all, all day long. But uh, yeah, for the rest of us schmucksters, it's going to be more uh, challenging now. Alrighty, well that was a little eventful uh, Dark Age we already had there. Both players are managing to keep their TCs ro running for the most part while laming like that, or at least not trying to stop the lame at the same time. Good stuff. As Viper just scouting around a little bit, has of course a lot of line of sight on his scout, so you know, more vision. And oh, Velez, if he was thinking about pushing in his deer, Viper is not going to let that happen. Viper is a snake, man. He is... Uh... He is, uh, he is, uh, yeah, in Dutch we have a word for that, venenic. It's kind of like venomous, but not really, like, not the poisonous aspect, but kind of like the na- It's kind of like a- What's the word there? What's the word in, in English for that? I have no idea, but it applies to snakes. It's like, kind of like a sneaky mean kind of thing. Like, uh, I don't know, feisty, feisty, sneaky mean, something. Oh, in that, in that alley, I don't know. Uh, any case, yeah, Viper chasing a Velasa scout down, and I don't think Velasa is going to be too happy about that, because of course, remember, it's Mongols, and Mongols go up faster. Viper already clicking up at 17 pop, and that's going to be a fast, fast scout rush. Even without laming, Mongols can get a really good castle time, and Velasa scout is going to go down. My only hope is, is Velasa going to find Viper before that happens? Minute away, he's on his way, he's getting close now. Ah, uh, Velasa... It's still one minute. In one minute, the scout will die to Viper Scout. It will die. It can't escape anymore. It's too far away from his own base. As Velez now finds the goats, and he's like, Yes, these are my goats now. And the Viper's like, No, those are my goats. And Velez's like, No, these are my goats. 
I think Alphalas really wants to do here. He wants to lame them. He wants to lame them. He now knows that Viper must be over here, but he hasn't scouted a whole lot of Viper space just yet. Still trying to do as much as he can, but the Viper... 20 seconds away, will be in field lanes, and will be able to get some scouts out, start rushing your opponent. That's the strength of Mongols. It is their signature rush to Veleste. Yeah, he's trying to scout as much as he can, but because he must know, he must know that Viper is up. But yeah, that scout goes down now, and there we go. Stable going up as well. I'm not sure if Veleste actually saw that or not. No, he didn't. He didn't see that. Oh, but I mean, he knows, but he didn't see the stable go up. But again, he knows, so I guess it doesn't matter. Now, uh, we haven't really talked about the player bases. We have four berries here, which Veles is going to wall in because he knows the scouts are coming. He's still 20 seconds away from Feudalates. He can't even experiment right now to defend himself. And this scout could still kill villagers, even with Loom. We have uh, wood lines that are very far away, right? So with Khmer... Ugh. I mean, you can at least hide in houses. This is the thing. At least you can hide villagers in houses as Viper tries to snipe that weak vill. That's not going to happen. Nope. Nope. That villager survives on 3 HP. We'll probably be a farmer now. Yeah, first scout will be coming out for Viper sooner rather than later. And Veles knows I have been spotted. I have to leave the zebra carcass. Cadaver. We have back gold for Velasco, so at least that's kind of nice. It's far away from your opponent. We have some stone in the back if you want some stone walls or a castle. Something like that. A little bit with Khmer. Very rare that you get that. Well, Mongols, though, we have stone in the back of Viper's base, which is really nice. We have a back main gold as well, but it is very open, as you can see. But if he walls, gets this side walled, gets this side walled, I mean, his base is fine. It's fine, right? I mean, I always love when my base is in the corner of the map, rather than in the middle, because now you have to wall more. And Viper just being annoying with those first scouts. Of course, Velez could always jump into a house if he really needed to. Always could jump into a house. Now it's two scouts, so he might very well just do that. The only problem is, I think there are six villagers there. Seven villagers there. Only five spaces. So this is a deadly game of chairs, you know. Like, uh, if the music stops and you're still not sitting on a chair, you're dead. It sounds like That sounds like something that should happen in a squid game, honestly. And, oh yeah, and that's true, and that's true, we haven't, I actually haven't mentioned it just yet, but the Khmer, big Khmer problems in the scout war is that you have no barracks, or at least, you can definitely build a barracks, but most people don't build the barracks because they want to, uh, well, cheap it out on it, because you can save the wood, invest it into farms, yeah, I can see the advantages, it's almost three farms of worth of wood. But Viper's gonna make Spearman. Already has more scouts out than you. And once the Spearman show up as well, you just can't take any engagements anymore against these scouts. Yep, there come the Spearman. No reason not to send them forward. And Velez is gonna have to find a way to deal with these freaking scouts. And this is why a Mongol scout rush is so dangerous. This is what makes it so dangerous. As Velez, they're leading the walls here so he can fight with villagers as well. Viper, he doesn't want to fight here. He's just debating a little bit. Velez now with a fourth scout, but again, has less scout HP on his scouts overall because Viper didn't barely took any damage. Viper sending in a spearman. He's hiding them for Velez. Velez can't see these. He can't see the spearman. He's coming out now. He sees the scouts from Viper. Still waiting for an engagement. That's the hill, but now suddenly. We'll see the Spearman in a second here. Look at that. And now you see the Spearman. And oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, Veles immediately abandoning his hill. Losing that hill. And Viper's like, okay, good. Now I'm going to go to your villagers too. Veles trying to quick wall it in. The quick wall fails. And these villagers cannot run to the house. No. Oh, Veles. Great play from the Viper. Immediately showing why Khmer are weak in Scout Wars. If you do not get Spearman now. Viper, you know, Veles trying to save his villages, and there's still a hole. How do you wall? How do you wall this hill? Rips through the villages, and they're walled out from the house as well. And another villager going down. Veles down three villages at the start of the game. More scouts coming in. Viper is just putting on the pressure, and Veles says, "Okay, screw this. GG." I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna like this game with Mongols. Uh, I mean, against Mongols, and I'm not gonna like this game with Khmer, and definitely not after all of this. And this might very well well be the fastest game of the tournament. In all honesty, uh, done under 14 uh, minutes. I mean, players have gone up in, to castle in this time, right? I'm, I swear to God, this was definitely the fast, the fastest, uh, the fastest game so far. And, and to anyone, right? This right here is how you do a Mongol scout rush. Right there, this is how you do it. If you need an example, you're like, how does this build order work? Right here, this how Viper just played this. This is how you do it. This is a perfect Mongol scout rush. And remember what I said? Mongols, they have two windows. Either you kill fast or you kill in late Imperial Age. You know, in the castle age, it's kind of tricky. Viper chose to first.
<clears throat> and kill fast and kill fast he did and Velas was about to lose so many villagers damage would have been critical and that the snake is looking strong man you know that first game looked a little bit wavery but he has bounced right back and this is what i'm talking about top tier viper very difficult to stop especially if you don't have a barracks to make spearmen if it honestly this is also this is two things. This is Viper really being really good with the strategy, bringing the spearmen around, hiding them in time so Viles did not have to time the quick walters anymore. One and two, the fact that Viles didn't go for spearmen. If you're up against Mongols, if you're up against a Sif that you expect scouts from, if it's going to be a scout war and your Khmer, build the barracks. I know, <clears throat> I know it's so tempting, right? It's so tempting to skip the barracks and not make spearmen out. But in most cases, and in this tournament as well, I have seen Khmer lose too many damn times because they didn't make a freaking barracks, didn't make spearmen, and, didn't, and then lost the scout war. You know, they're supposed to be good at the scout war because of their food production, but it's completely nerfed if your opponent just makes a few spearmen. So either you make your own spears or, and this is true as well, or you make skirmishers or archers, right? Anything. You need something to kill their spearmen because otherwise it's never going to be an even engagement. You just can't, like, look, Valesa scouts, they're just watching. They can't engage here. They can't fight. There's five scouts for Viper. There's two spearmen. They would absolutely destroy Valesa scouts. You just, you're just forced to stand there and watch. And it's just, yeah. That's why. So when you're Khmer, please... Get a counter to Spearmen. Because your opponent will know. Will know Spearmen are your weakness. They will know. So. Can't get away with that. I don't think so at least. And, and remember. Remember. What was it? Uh, there was a game uh, earlier. I, was it Jordan Tato? Did, uh, because one of the players had Khmer and they made Spearmen. And look how much more successful that game was. The Khmer player didn't die in Feudal Age for one. You know. Like. He actually survived because of the Spearmen. Or you make archers, that works as well. Or you go cavalry archers like, like Slam did. What a troll. Hilarious. Yeah, in any case, I mean... It's a very short game, so the statistics aren't very meaningful right now. Uh, so yeah, GG. Great victory for the snake, though. Once again, proving that, yeah, Khmer, they really need... That, that, that bonus for Khmer is also, also a weakness. It's also a weakness. It really is. It, it's... It is the perfect example of a bonus that has both a bo a both an advantage, gives you an advantage, but also has drawbacks, right? It's like the monkey paw. Monkey's paw. Like, yes, you can, you can save wood on your barracks, but you can't get destroyed by scouts and spearmen. Anyways, we have a game four, so let's get into that uh, that fourth game now. And Viper looking looking strong here, taking the lead in the series as well. Uh, you know, and Veles will have to uh, definitely up his level in turn now to uh, counter the Viper. But Viper again, he he is a legend for a reason. So let's go and kabow alrighty welcome to the fourth game here between the viper and Veles, and the viper just getting a, a, a beautiful victory on the last game Veles is going to, going to want to counter here and man oh man look at the civilizations here it's franks for Veles. it is burgundians for the viper now this is an interesting matchup for one it's historical these are two uh, historical arch rivals that's one uh two it's actually a really interesting cavalry matchup which civilization do we prefer here? I mean, depending on how long the game goes, we would definitely prefer Franks. In the Feudal Age, Franks rule. In the Castle Age, Burgundians rule with Cavalier. But in the Imperial Age, Franks rule again with Paladin. So it depends on, on how you look at it. Is Viper just lamed a few goats? Yeah, Viper is just uh, turning on the lame here, man. Turning on the lames. I mean, Viper loves his laming here and there as well. You thought MBL was bad? Viper likes it too. So yeah, depending on how this game goes, it could should be better for Veles. I mean, I definitely favor Franks to a certain degree, but don't don't forget that that Viper, the Burgundians have a lot of bonuses as well. As Veles had a villager all the way out here, and Viper was already there. Wants to snipe the villain, it's not going to run away before taking too much damage. Delaying this lumber camp as well. Viper's like, yeah, you're gonna have to make loot. You're gonna have to get loom, buddy, before you go here. Only loom villagers allowed. As uh, Viper, of course, loudly announcing that he is in the back of uh, Valesca's base, so he's not going to steal this this elephant. That uh, that would be kind of silly. This elephant, though, now that 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 is debatable. That is, uh, we can we can discuss that. I mean, it's in the front of your base, so Valesca could. I mean, the scout is out here, so you should be able to block that. I don't think Viper's going to take that risk, but uh, yeah. 
Now, Burgundians have a pretty good eco as well. You know, they have the eco bonus where you can get, exactly, you can get double bid X and a dark age already. You can get any of these eco decks in the, in the age before you can actually get them normally. At a discount as well. It's a really solid bonus. Having lo uh, double bid X right now means you can have fewer villagers on wood, more villagers on food, which means you can go faster than feudal age. Now, there's one problem that Burgundians have. They cannot get, uh, they cannot get good scouts in feudal age. Franks will have the better scouts in Feudal Age because Frank scouts will have more HP and Feudal in Feudal Age and Burgundian scouts cannot get bloodline so they can't match that themselves. And that is something to keep in mind then. So definitely Franks should have the lead in early Feudal but in Castle Age, Burgundians, when that economy starts rolling they do get Cavalier with extra, you know, basically a knight with extra attack. Uh, you know, because no bloodline so it evens out a little bit but that still gives you an edge in the night fights. So I wonder how that's going to go then. In Imperial Age though, Frank Paladin rules all. Now, it's very open actually. Look at this generation for Arabia. That is a really open generation. Now, because you're Franks and Burgundians, again, mobility, you don't really need to wall as much. But man, that is like barren. There's like nothing here. Nothing. One cactus. As Viper finds his goats, very nice. Has some wood. I mean, there's some wood lines to the side, but that's so far away from your DC. That's a lot of, that's a lot of running actually. Has a gold in the back though, that's nice. A stone in the back as well if you want to cast slot for Custodiers. Uh, we have another gold in the back. So again, resource-wise, it's pretty good for the Viper. It's just that there's no wood lines over here to use as a wall. So you can't really wall your economy that easily. He's probably going to wall to his DC and maybe to the edge of the map. Maybe then from the edge of the map uh, to this side. And maybe later we get a wall up over here. As, ooh, Veles says, ooh, tasty goats there. You stole my goats last time. These are mine. And now you're not going to get these, Sonny. And Viper, of course, doesn't agree with that. As Veles, ooh... Viper doesn't have loom yet. Velez is thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Am I going to attack the Viper here? Am I going to attack his uh, attack his villager and then decide against it? Both players clicking up around almost exactly the same time. Viper slightly uh, delayed here by a few seconds, but that, that barely counts. Velez also gets the goats, which he will be happy with. He can take those at some point or just hide them in the corner because you don't want Viper to have them. Either way, it's fine. As Viper walling in his villager so it cannot get sniped. He's going to get his barracks up for the scout build. And both players, of course, 20 pop scouts for now. As for Valencia's base, also very open. But the wood lines are more evenly spread out. So if you wanted to wall like that, you could do it. You could wall it in a triangle. But I don't think he's going to do that, though. I, th I think he's more just going to wall in a circle in front of his base. That's what, what pros usually do. That's a main goal that's forward though. He's building his barracks in front of that. That's a good that's a good move, by the way. Putting your barracks in front of your your and your military production building in front of your goal allows you to fast uh defend that quickly, right? Defend it quickly in case of need. Uh berries in the back, but in a little a little hill here, uh or a little hole here in the hill. It's kinda like a Pac-Man hill. It's a crescent shaped, uh a moon shaped hill. Very nice. All right, well, both players are going up. No, not a whole lot of Dark Age aggression. I didn't think we were going to see a whole lot of that, honestly. It's just going to be scouts for both players uh, as Velez bringing in his goats. These will make it to to make it home as uh, yeah, Velez also saving the villages that he has on the hunt. But, ooh, trying to drop a barracks. Viper does see that. Don't think he can stop it, though. It's two villagers with Lube. Cracking my back a little bit. There we go. That's better. Uh, Valesh is going to push that away with his own scout, which has more HP than Viper Scout. But then Viper Scout, uh, you know, he already has more HP than Viper Scout because it's 54, not 45. You know, 9 more HP definitely matters in Scout Wars. You know, it's 2 extra hits you can tank that way. As we have Viper walling the right side of his base. So I wondered if he was going to do that. Because, you know, like your base is so open. Walling a little bit, you know, this limits the mobility for Velez. You can't like run in on this side and run out on that side, right? You can't do that anymore. So that's why it's a good idea. As Viper bringing forward the Spearman and Velez is like, yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake again. We're going to make Spearman ourselves this time around as well. So it's going to be a full on sc scout war. And I wonder, I wonder how long is this one going to be? Because... The more open a base is, the more aggressive a game will get it in, in Feudal Age and how, potential, no, how much longer potentially Feudal Age can last. So all in Feudals are most, you know, most likely on maps like these. When bases are very open, it's hard to wall, hard to wall, stop the scout pressure from happening and both players have to stay on the tippy toes. 
Viper. Five spearmen. Wait, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. Vipers are making scouts. Oh, hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. No stable either. Uh, is he spearman rushing? He's essentially spearman rushing Veles right now. Oh, he's, yeah, he's spearman rushing Veles. I've never seen that. Really? No, no stable? Why, why not a stable? It, 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 okay. Well, the, the, the Viper doing something that uh, some would consider greedy here. Like, this is what's, what you would call greedy, right? You know, when you... Uh, uh, greedy, right? When you you should not be able to get away with that. And Veles, not seeing any scouts, should be able to get some kills there. Because a lot of spearmen are forward dealing with, yeah, just poking each other down there. Veles, yeah, yes, the scouts here can get some kills now. And Viper has to go for a lot of quick walls now. I wonder if that's worth it. Uh, Viper also only on one wood line as well. Doesn't have a whole lot on wood, actually. So, couldn't really afford that stable. Still can, actually, if you, if you look at his wood count. And Valencia, yeah, he's, he's looking around right now. He's looking around to see if there's some extra villagers. Oh, Viper's villagers are exposed. He tried to quick wall them in, but that's too late now. Five scouts here for Valencia, but he doesn't want to fight the spearmen, so he's going to run away from that for now. But again, it's five uh, five uh, scouts and Valles. I mean, he's going to switch into archers himself, so he's not going to continue to make scouts here, but he still has a bunch of scouts now on the on the, on the berries as well. More spearmen coming out for Viper. I mean, at least if you're going to commit to defending with spearmen, you got to commit to it. you got to make a lot of spearmen. There needs to be spearmen at every point. Every checkpoint has to have a spearman. You know, every resource needs to have a spearman as well. You can't just slack off and be like, oh, four spearmen are going to do it. No, 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 no. Ten spearmen, that's what's going to do it. And Viper committing to that as well. It's a lot of food and wood investment, so I wonder, is that worth it then? Uh, you tell me. You tell me. The last, I mean, causing a lot of idle time in Viper's economy as well. Look at Viper's uh, worker efficiency. It's only 63 right now. Because the villagers have to keep running away from these scouts. So Veles, even by running around, still does damage to Viper's economy. It feels counterintuitive, of course, because he's not really killing anything, but yeah, you cause idle time, you cause, uh, you know, less worker efficiency. So the villagers that Viper has, even though he has the same amount of villagers as you, are working less efficiently overall. The last though, it's going to go for the follow-up. Yeah, it's just going to bring out archers. I was actually looking for them. There they are. Archers coming out now for Veles and Viper. Dropping an archer range himself now probably expects the archers to come out because these archers, of course, are going to be able to snipe the spearmen quite easily. And now these scouts, which are still alive, can uh, do some serious damage. Yeah, Viper with nine spearmen can't stop this. Can't stop this, can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm, interesting strategy choice, right? I mean, clearly Viper wants to go up to the to the castellates as fast as he can. But look at the resources for Veles, right? And this is also something that fascinates me. It fascinates me how this always happens. How the player that invests more in a certain age into military, often case, goes up first, right? Viper is not going to click up first here. It's Veles that's clicking up first. Veles made military, made five scouts at 400 food right there. He's still going to click up first. And I think it all has to do with this worker efficiency right there. Look at that. That's seven minutes more of work time for Veles, right? So even though he invested more heavily in the feudal age because his villagers were always working, his economy was pretty much untouched, he is still going to click up first there, which is why the passive strategy here from the Viper, basically a greedy strategy, despite him not taking any damage, he's still going to be behind. And remember, like... Taking, not taking any damage is step one. You also need to do, do damage to your opponent. Otherwise, he, he will just have, you know, the same as you. Except you had to invest in, in, in defending. Yeah, Viper has some skirmishes now to defend himself against the archers. But I'm still looking to do some damage there. But I'm just... I don't know. I'm just not, not sure about the strategy for, for the Viper. I mean, I mean, oh, from one side, I do understand it. Because if you're going to go for a head-to-head -head scout war against Franks... Franks are going to easily de defeat you in that. Like, Frank's scouts are way stronger. Way stronger than Burgundian scouts could ever be. Now, this much I do understand. But, I mean, without a lot of walls and then just defending with spearmen, it's a very risky, risky strategy. Stables now finally going up for the Viper, you know, at minute 20. Damn. Uh, that, of course, is going to be for Cavalier, an upgrade that he will be able to get. But, of course, Veles is going to click up the first here. He's going to get the Castellate before uh, uh, before um, uh, the Viper does. 
they'll push trying to push away these uh, these these darn skirmishers but of course viper microing this really well has a lot of spearmen still to protect himself and Vales in the castle age Ah, very nice, very nice indeed. Ooh, Skirmish is kind of out of position now. Velez wants to get some kills in, but yeah, too close to the Spearman now. Runs away, loses a scout. Very nice uh, for Velez. Gets the uh, crossbow upgrade as well. And Velez, of course, you know, he's not really investing in a whole lot of army right now. He's sending forward some reinforcements. You know, more crossbows, it's good. He's going to send, uh, uh, drop another town center on the wood line. Very nice. Still some engagements over here. Viper. He's going to get the uh, the armor upgrade on his knights. He's probably going to get the cavalier upgrade as soon as possible as well. But he needs something right now against these freaking crossbows. Especially as it's eight crossbows now. That's a pretty solid number right there. Yeah, it's an interesting strategy. It kind of reminds me of Hera versus uh, versus Winchester, where Hera in the what was it the, the the fifth game, the fourth game or something? Yeah, I think the fourth game went for a really greedy strategy. Like didn't make barely made any military and just tried to go as uh, up to Imperial Age as fast as possible or something like that. You know, it was really interesting to see, and he got away with it too. It was the first fast castle successful successful fast castle attempt that I cast at least this tournament. Uh, but yeah, I mean. Spoilers, it did not really work out for him there, and I'm not sure if it's going to work out for the Viper here. The last 43 villagers, most of his villagers are working all the time, has dropped the town center though on the gold, so at least there's that, 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 that gold should be safe, and other town center on the wood as well. So he is also going to be uh, greedily booming behind this then, but Veles sitting right in the middle of Viper Town with some crossbows. Wonder what Viper is going to do about that one. There's some military for Veles everywhere, there's a lot of vision right now. And half of Viper's economy is idle. Like, he's just idling most of his economy right now. 23 out of 20 villages, that is more than 50%. And Veles, he's going to go to he's two town centers, which he's uh, continuously producing from. He's sending forward more knights, more more military. He's just getting relics right now. Veles is a loving life. It's just looking really good. And Veles also correctly countering Viper's strategy. Not just letting Viper boom here, not just get away with it. And this is why, right? This is why we would normally call this greedy, but not so much anymore, because I don't think Viper has really gotten away with it so far, right? So far. Now Cavalier is in. Let's see how, how the fight is going to go now. If Viper is going to go a bit more aggressive. Because again, the game is not over just yet. Because Viper did defend really well. Only lost one villager. No, actually he killed a villager. He didn't lose one. The only villager kill of the game was for Viper. Never mind, I read that, that chart wrong. So the defense has been really good. But again, the games aren't won by defending. You have to go aggressive at some point. And oh, a Cavalier going forward, finding a town center. Ooh, good counter there for uh, the Viper. As he's going to try to get a kill, but mm, conversion coming in there for Veles. Veles very happy with that. A free, free Cavalier in Castellade. See, now, now Veles has stolen the Cavalier technology, right? And now, you know, he will know how to get uh, Cavaliers himself. This is how it went historically, you know. If, you, if your opponent had a weapon that you didn't have, you stole the weapon and tried to recreate it. Now you'll see the French, as soon as they get their technology up, they will be able to recreate the Cavalier in Castellate and do it better. You know, Viper getting a, a market up as well, so he can sell, buy some resources. Or at least he was building one over here, and then I guess he deleted it? Oh, okay. Military count 22 to 19. Viper, yeah, but most of Viper's military is made of spearmen. He is sending his cavalier around to let's see if he can get some kills in from the raid. And man, for that spot step, man, it's so difficult to see on a mini map. But Viper blocking the escape route of these villagers and more villagers dying now. And again, despite Viper being so freaking passive, five villager kills for him, oh, zero for Veles. Veles has not been able to kill a single villager for the Viper. And this is the most frustrating thing about playing the snake because the dude gets away with it all the freaking time. Like he defends so well, it's so difficult to punish the Viper, right? That's what made him one of the best players in the world. Not necessarily his awesome micro, not necessarily the macro. It's the fact that he could go for strategies like this and there was no way to punish him. I mean, there was ways to punish him, but it just didn't work out. He just stopped you from doing it. He just never could get away with it. We see another town center right now for the Viper and I wonder he's not seriously considering Flemish Revolution here, is he? That seems to, that that is such a Viper troll thing if he gets away with that. That's what I mean. Like, like that's the kind of stuff that Viper would do and get away with. No conversion for Veles. Very unfortunate for him. Gonna try again. Viper will run away with the Cavalier. 
I'm curious, man, because again, a fourth down center, that's a pretty steep boom right there. If Rapper is behind in the, in the, in the mid villager count and Velez is going to counter with his own fourth down center, so he wants to stay ahead in the vill lead. You know, despite... Despite the fact that Velez has lost five villagers, Viper has had a lot of idle TC time as a result. He is actually behind in the Vil count as well. Velez keeping his army safe at home, uh, and he's at least close to his base to defend. And oh, actually, he has to defend right now because Viper getting more snipes now. Getting a villager, to, uh, a conversion coming in for Velez as well. Very nice. Velez also wants to drop a market, or at least he's thinking about it. We'll probably drop it at some point. Because that's a lot of gold he has, actually. Look at that gold number. I wonder if Velez is thinking maybe uh, maybe thinking about clicking up here. He doesn't quite have the food for it yet, but he does have the gold. So if he could maybe sell, buy some food and, you know, sell some stuff. He's also on stone as well to get a castle up. Velez, realizing there's a hole in the wood line, uh, it will patch that up because you don't want to get caught by the cavalier. And there they are. I mean, Viper just see that. So he assumes it's walled. Which it actually isn't, but there's knights here. A wall of shields is always the best kind of a wall. Cross Carls will agree. As Viper, you know, attacking on the left side is coming from two sides again. See, this is what you would do, right? You attack from multiple fronts as this AI army makes its way forward. That's hilarious. Hilarious as, ooh, Velez is paying attention. Like, he's paying attention a lot because Viper is attacking from multiple sides here. Really good from the Viper. He's drawing Velez's main army away from the front, uh, you know, attacking the TC. You know, he loses the Cavalier in the end, but still, you know, still, you know, you attack from multiple sides. Velez, though, again, look at the gold number. Look at the, the food number. He's not really making that many knights right now. I wonder if he just wants to take this to Imp. He's on 78 villagers, producing from four town centers as well. So is the Viper. Viper's resource count is also steadily climbing here. And he's still making Cavaliers. 18 on the field right now for the Viper. 70 knights for Velez. Which is a lead. Technically, is a lead for Velez. Oh, uh, Velez. I mean, for the Viper. Uh, the Viper also getting a conversion as well. Velez trying to get conversion. Wow, look at that Monk Marco. So many conversions coming in at the same time. Great stuff there. Lots of conversions coming in. But still, Viper had the superior military he here. So he's still going to be able to clear. Especially with the Spearman in tow. But now Velez sending in the rest of his army. Sending in the rest of his army. Looking to get some damage done. As he is now essentially killing his own uh, his own knights and spearmen. And look at the HP, it's so clear. But if the spearmen get in here, I think Velez might actually lose this fight then. Might actually lose this fight. Oh uh, yeah, there's not a fight you want to take. And this is what I was talking about. Franks might be the better Sith overall, maybe. But Burgundians have the ed edge in Castle Age. That is when Burgundians shine. And Viper knows that as well. Oh, my god. That villager count is rising and rising. He's not seriously going to do it, right? Like, that can't, that can't be a thing. Yeah, I'm not even willing to consider that. That's, it's a $75,000 tournament. It's a best of seven quarterfinals. No way, right? No way, right? I mean, now I'm kind of hoping that it happens because I would love that. But, uh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, Velez trying to quick wall. <gasps> oh, the villagers blocking the quick wall. Disaster there for Velez. He's going to lose a bunch of villagers as well. The eco kitty has been anything but equal. 13 kills for the Viper. One for Velez. Again, it's not been able to do a whole lot of damage to the Viper as the Viper keeps running in with Cavalier, keeps raiding Veles over and over. If Veles is dealing with raids on the left, there is raids on the right. Very nice. Yeah, Viper getting a kill over here as well. And look at that. He's attacking from all fronts. There's Cavalier everywhere right now. Everywhere. Castle will go up on the left, but still, you know, you need to keep yourself as safe as you can. And that uh, Viper, you know, he's... Uh, He's losing a bunch of Cavalier doing this, but Velez is struggling to keep up with the raids right now. Struggling to keep up, and the Viper just happily raiding around. And the longer the Castle Age goes, the better it is for him. If Velez gets the Imperial Age, now that's a whole different story. That's when he can get Paladin with way more HP, uh, especially Frank Paladin, right? Significantly more HP than Burgundian Paladin. But uh, we're still a long ways away from that. 93 villages for Velez, 109 for the Viper. As his will count continues to rise. It continues to rise. Now he's selling wood. I wonder if he's thinking about clicking up the imp now. Because that's when you sell wood. Of course he had a lot of wood left. And he's getting a pretty good price for it as well. Fights happening all over Velez's base. And Velez is still struggling to keep his night numbers up. He's producing from four stables right now. But of course he's dealing. You know he's using a worse unit against Cavalier right. Like the knights. They just lack the attack here. Lack the attack especially without the, the full upgrades there. 
But that really needs to get more numbers out. That's really the only key. That's the key to beating Burgundians here. You need to have the numbers. Let's not look at this. The Cavalier raiding the gold. And Valesse hasn't reacted to it. There's too much going on. Too much going on. Like, you can't keep reacting to everything here. And Viper, yeah, Valesse now noticing it. But there's a little bit uh, slightly too late there. As Viper is going to drop a castle right on the town center as well. Something Valesse can see but not stop. Uh, you know, you can see it right now, Cabell, uh, right there. But another castle going up on the left side for the Viper as well. Village account still rising. Uh, is that going to be a get out of my game strategy? You just see it coming, you just see it coming. Yeah, that would be hilarious. I really hope that happens, actually. Cavalier still raiding, Veles. Has been at around 100 villages for this entire time right now. And Viper is still making villagers. He's probably thinking about clicking up the imp at some point, you'd say. Although he doesn't quite have the gold and the resources for it yet. But his economy is very good. Very good. He's been raiding Veles a lot. Now a castle up on his forward town center and the forward gold. Not too hot for Veles. He's going to have to abandon, right? He's going to have to abandon that. He's going to go to stone himself because he wants another castle as well. Even though he does have a stone for another castle right now. But where are you going to put that up as Viper still... Getting more kills with these Cavalier with 14 attack in total after this upgrade comes in. It's... Again, I, that's why I was kind of curious to see how this matchup would go. Because Franks, yeah, it's, it's legendary civilization. But in Castle Age, the knights are generic knights. They're not special. They're not anything special. They're just normal knights with full upgrades. That's it. That's it. Like, just 120 HP. And in that, you're suddenly uh, behind your opponent who has the same amount of HP because no bloodlines, but more attack. It's, it's... Also, I think, do they attack a little bit faster as well? No, no, no not that. It's the same amount of attack. Castle not going off for Veles, but oh god, the farmland. The farmland for Veles is to run away with all the villagers. Ay, 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 ay. Sacre bleu. The French farms have to run away. Ay. 145 villagers. Viper, you better not, man. You better not. How dare you? If, we, if you know what I'm thinking about right now, you'll probably know why that is normally would be a ridiculous, right? A ridiculous strategy to go for. But in this case, I just you just see it coming. As Velez is uh, getting some conversions now. This is a good fight for Velez with more knights. Look at the HP as well. Much higher for uh, Velez right now. So he is going to clear up on this side. But Viper clicking up the imp right now. Velez can buy himself up the imp as well. And I really wonder, is Viper actually going to do it? Is he actually going to do it? He's keeping most of the map safe with uh, uh, keeping most of the map safe with castles now. More stone for him. He's getting a lot of map control as is. Still has 146 villages over for less than 119. I I, I, I doubt it though. I doubt it. That is so risky, man. That is so risky. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to say anything until I actually see the proof, which I haven't seen. I haven't seen any indication so far. There's no indication yet that this is the plan. As one weak knight is raiding the gold here in Viper. She's going to garrison it, DC, and shoot it down. Pow. There it goes. Oh, Veles losing so many villagers again. Look at the Eagle Giddy. It hasn't even been close. 62 to 4, and Veles says GG. And the Viper probably says, Oh, I wanted to go for a Flemish Revolution. But yeah, listen. This is so well played by the Viper. He was just first being freaking greedy like really greedy this was really greedy like making no scouts whatsoever because he thought okay frank scouts are probably gonna obliterate my scouts let's not take the risk we'll just make a bunch of spearmen and we'll get, we'll, we'll see from there no kept himself safe and despite Feles getting ahead right his economy was much better viper didn't lose a single villager there not a single villager it was really well done then in castlate using that cavalier advantage that you have over over the knights from franks Franks just need something else. I think Veles should have been spamming some pikemen, maybe. Uh, you know, just something, right? Post pikemen around your resources. Wall some a bit. You know, castle more. Use more cheap Frank castles. I don't know. Something, right? Uh, against these cavalry, you need to give yourself an edge. And in Imperial Age, Franks would have done better again with the better cavalry. But Viper also recognizing, if I go ultra aggressive here, Franks will never get to castle age. And then the longer the castle age lasts for me... The better it is. You know, the better it is. Viper's economy was miles better than Veles. He had like 150 villages to 100. That's crazy. 
And Valencia just kept getting raided. If he was dealing with it on the right, then Viper was on the left. If he dealt with it on the left, then Viper was in the middle. Then Viper was in Valencia's, whoops, in Valencia's base. Then Viper was on the right again. And sometimes at the same time, it's very frustrating to deal with. You know, you have to keep paying attention to your entire economy. And the Viper looking so strong right now. And Valencia, one game away from, get, from getting knocked out of the quarterfinals. And it's not looking too hot for, for Valencia. You know, the... Viper is bringing his A, a game today, you know, you had to warm up a little bit at the start, but the, the, the snake train is going right now, it's going choo-choo. But can Vales, can Vales counter in the next game? I guess we will find out uh, after the statistics and after I click, uh, you know, click into the next game. So we'll see in a second. Yeah, look at that KD, look at that! 147, 78 uh, uh, losses for Viper, like much better KD. And that is mostly because he killed a lot of villagers at the same time. But also just raiding around. Raiding, raiding, raiding. And he had the better unit to do it. And Vales got 20 conversions. 20 conversions and still didn't matter. Still did not matter. Yeah, just, just great stuff, really. Yeah, look at the economy. Significantly better there for the Viper. Almost 10,000 more resources collected. You got a lot of villagers for both players. Look at that. Vales actually made more villagers in total than Viper did. But he lost a whole lot more as well. He lost 60 villagers in total. Jeez. And look at that. Both players were going and high kit. This was a pretty good game. This was a really good game. Very high stakes, actually. Both players looking to win that. And in the end, for less, yeah. In the end, for less, getting raided too much. Getting raided too much. Had to call it quits there. 3-1 for the Viper. Now, this last game is going to be critical for both players. I mean, Viper has a match point. He can win the series here, but Vales, of course, has to win the next game if he wants to stay in King of the Desert 4. And there we have it. Game 5. Let's see how much... Uh, if we have some speculate, then I will show you the draft. If not, we'll just go straight into the game if you don't mind. Let's see. And there's the game. Let's go. Let's see how much speculate we have. I hope we have some speculate, actually. As... Whoops. No, no speculate. We'll just go straight into it. And I saw a civilization that uh, strikes my fancy. Oh boy. Whoa, don't speed up now. Uh, let me uh, zoom. Uh, let me uh, roll. Uh, rewind this a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty. Welcome to the fifth game between Veles and the Viper. Veles has gone for Incas. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Maybe she has more uh, uh, YOLO Sif than anyone else, even though it's actually a really good Arabia Sif. But lots of options, but Viper, gone for Sicilians, also has a very open tech tree and also has cavalry. And what is the main weakness for Sicilians? It's heavy cavalry, uh, uh, you know, that comes in. It's 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 heavy camels, you know, do pretty well. But really, heavy cavalry. Uh, cavalry. I'm talking about paladins. Paladins are the you know the, the death of Sicilians. That is something they struggle against because their hopper cavalier can deal with anything else. And the other thing is uh, uh, cavalry archers. To a certain degree you know you don't have the final armor crates on your skirmishers so cavalry archers can do a lot of damage you know especially uh you know because sicilians don't really i mean it's not really a unit they should go for themselves although they can but they don't get party and tactics don't get uh, a thumb ring so it's not really a good unit to go for really that's it though i mean it's not like incas can't do anything it's not like incas are uh, already it's already a loss for Vales just by picking incas i think incas as a jack of all trades have some options available here among a prime among everything if if the viper thinks about going for sergeants Vales can make uh it can make uh um what's they called again slingers the unique unit from incas which is a counter to infantry a very good unit to have and also if you want to go eagles combining that with slingers allows you to stop your opponent from going long swords against you so that your eagles can actually massacre their economy yes so incas being a jack of all trade civs maybe one of the most versatile mes well meso civs i mean eagle civs in the game very nice Alrighty, well, let's see, the Viper, I mean, Vales was already scouting for, you know, maybe for a bit of a lame, getting himself an advantage, but did not see anything, Viper keeping his economy safe, Viper is also scouting, doesn't quite know where Vales is just yet, but I mean, that 
it's not gonna take too long before it finds it looking at the bases though oh boy oh boy we have an aggressive generation two wood lines that are kind of uh, flimsy because of uh, the fact that a pond generated in the middle of it and in my opinion like you shouldn't get too many pawns in one map like i think two to three to four is like four at the max should be enough uh, as far as i'm concerned because one like what has happened sometimes is like look how many pawns there are on valessa's side viper doesn't have as many pawns so he has bigger wood lines so that's not really fair right that's not really fair so that's definitely not something i would say about this generation of king of the desert less pawns like i love the pawns it's pretty but less of them you know make them special because it's not much of a desert if half, if half of the map is pawns you know oases anyways looking at the wood lines though the back of Valessa's base is very open as you can see you have a forward gold uh you know on a hill that's kind of tricky for pushing in his ostrich there's another gold right next to that kind of forward so that's a uh, another an easy goal to take what about the other gold oh in the back great spot for a tc on your wood line on the gold perfect uh we have berries for it as well on a hill which viper now sees so he is aware of that and now yeah, for the rest again it's very open so not a lot of safe wood lines uh I wonder who that favors. I think, he, I think that would favor Sicilians, honestly. Because Sicilians, right, they have one great bonus uh, related to that, which is uh, if you get a farm upgrade, that is double the food you get extra on your farms, which means you don't need as much wood to afford to keep reseeding uh, your farms. So not having a lot of wood excess is not really a problem for Sicilians. They can get a lot more food out of their farms. Great stuff. Thumbs up to that. Anyways, oh, uh, and also Viper, man. Just Viper things. Back gold, back berries. Ba another back gold. Jesus Christ. Viper had map hacks, man. And then, you know, the worst part is he gets those map hacks right when it matters. In game five, when he has a match point. And it's just, that's just kind of funny to me. Age, Age of Vampires gods are fickle creatures, to be sure. I have a forward gold for the Viper as well. If he TCs right there. It's nice on the wood line, the gold. Very nice. Has a forward main stone on the hill, so that's not very accessible for now. Also doesn't see, oh, doesn't see some of his codes. Didn't uh, fully scout his base just yet. What about the other stone? All the way out here. Not too close to your TC, but it is all the way to the back of the map. So it's a, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I definitely prefer Viper's base here. I definitely prefer, for one, he has actual three, he has three fully formed wood lines, whereas Valesse has, I mean, he has Kind of two plus two slivers of wood, whereas Viper only has one. I mean, this is barely a wood line for the Viper. So at least, the less, you know, these wood lines can be used to walls. Or at least there is that, but it's not a lot of wood to work with. Viper has more access to that. And also, the wood lines to the right, very nice. Big wood lines rest for the less. Nope. And nope. And then this one, also kind of nope. So, like I said, that was what I was talking about earlier. Anyways, Valesse going for men at arms here with Incas. That makes sense. It's already on gold. This makes is a, a very clear opening for uh, the Inca player. As Valesse actually finding the goats now for Viper, and he's going to be happy with that to steal that. Viper scouting for it. Let's see if he sees the men at arms. Oh, he just misses them. Just misses them. That's good for Valesse. Good for Valesse because now Viper can't track that army. He sees the barracks. Uh, he sees the barracks. He is expecting men at arms, but now you don't know where they are. You don't know where they are and they could already be on your base. So uh, if that happens to you, right, uh, immediately, like the best thing to do is send your scout back immediately. Uh, just so, you know, you can use your scout in the defense. Now, that might may, maybe be a tip more for mid-elo, you know, maniacs like myself. Uh, for pro players, of course, they're more confident than that. So Viper well, just wants to see what Valette is actually going to do as a follow-up. It's going to be an archer range. But the men-at-arms on their way to the berries. They might be in the back, but that doesn't stop uh, your enemy from walking towards them. And Viper saw the eagle, probably knows, okay, that's where that's where Valette is going to show up. And quickly, quickly addressing the threat here to get some quick walls up. Uh, looks like no holes and man wow impressively done by the viper look at that still a hole there though but still walling that up in instantly there now this man these mandars have to walk all the way to the other side that was really well done from him yeah really well done just like this entire slew of walls up just in like what five seconds it's beautifully done beautifully done and it keeps out this pressure a lot. Now you don't have to quick wall your wood line. Uh, things like that. Your gold is safe. This, uh, this army has to go all hold the way around. Walk around your TC to hit your gold. That gives you a plenty of time to get your archers out and deal with this. And Valesse, yeah. Uh, I mean, the best thing to do now maybe is to just group up with your own archers that you're going to send forward. So we have a, a blacksmith already for Valesse. He wants to get his upgrades, obviously. Scout posted out there. Ooh, actually, he made that. He made that eagle scout. That's a new one. That's a new one. That wasn't there before. 
Well, interesting, interesting. But that's making a little bit of both then, uh, uh, you know, but I should think so. I should think it's mostly archers for now. That's walled uh, quite a bit, and this actually looks kind of funny. It looks like the wall kind of continues around the wood line that the villagers are chopping outside the walls. That's kind of funny. At the same time, Archer now seeing an eagle, probably seeing the second eagle as well. So now uh, Viper will be aware of the fact that eagles are on the menu uh, for uh, uh, for Veles. Eagles, of course, they have decent pierce armor without upgrades already. You know, you have, uh, what, what is it again? Let's check. Two base pierce armor, which makes them do pretty well, fairly well against archers. But really what you want to get is uh, the first armor upgrade. That definitely will help you against archers, especially if they have fletching, because they'll have five attack. You know, that, uh, that's pretty good. Let's see, yeah, let's bring in this men at arms home for now. I'll get... Ideally, you keep these men at arms around Viper space so you can more, do more damage with them. But Veles also knows that they're just not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. Anyways, it's better to group up with your archers and then attack together. Because then, you know, Viper still has to deal with these men at arms. But then, at the same time, is dealing with the archers. Finds his army now. So, Vel again, Viper's done a good job scouting around, tracking this army as good as he can. And now he can send his archers forward and deal with this. Archers with fletching now, so these men at arms should die very quickly. It's, uh, they're mostly a meat shield at this point. And Viper is just, yeah, it's doing fine. Doing fine. You know, again, has a better base than Veles anyways. But Veles has taken all this time, right, to wall up his base. Walling over here is kind of nice. Because now the fact that your base is open in the back is not so much of a problem anymore. If you go for the crazy walls. You know, there's still a hole in the front of his base, but that's where the TC is. That's okay. And that also gives uh, Veles the leisure, right, to, uh, to micro in the front. To maybe try to do some damage or to maybe try to kill uh, Viper's army. Because if you have holes in your base, moving forward is always scary. Now, the the berries are still exposed there. Still 90 foot on those. So Veles will want to defend his berries as long as he can. Yeah, it always sounds funny to say that. Wants to defend his berries as long as he can to get all the food on that. And Viper, of course, wants to hit that. But uh, Viper not too interested in losing, le losing his archers here. Remember, by the way, archers that take half the bonus damage from these skirmishers. They only take two. As Viper, man, selling all the stone. Look at that. Three stone, uh, three no stone sold for him, buying some food, and he is looking to click out to the castle very quickly here. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty quick, uh, very competitive uh, castle age time, honestly. Velez is not going to be able to max that unless he sells the stone as well, but it's going to get worse price for it. You know, like the, the like the person who does this first gets a big advantage with the, with the market. Because think about it. You first sell stone. So that the person that sells stone after that gets less gold for it. Then you buy food, so food becomes more expensive. So that person that then has to buy food has to pay more. So you get less gold for your stone and you have to pay more for the food. It's a big advantage to be the first to sell your stone. Like that's why it's so important to, to make that decision and not to, to dilly-dally too much about that. As a, uh, yeah, a stable going up now for, uh, for Incas. And that's, I mean, for, uh, not for Incas. That would be weird. For the Viper. And of course, he's going to get bloodlines. Of course, he's gonna make knights here. This is no, which would not be a surprise uh, to me. Yeah, armor upgrade coming in as well. And Sicilian knights. How do we deal with the Sicilian knights? Because remember, like normally, eagle warriors, right? Not these eagle warriors, but if you get eagle warrior, uh, like the upgrade of this unit, you get a bonus damage versus scouts. Uh, I mean, versus cavalry. Slightly so, but it does help them. It does give Eagle Warriors about the same base attack as a knight if they're fighting knights, right? So that's fair. However, against Sicilians, you do not get that as much. So you lose half your attack there. So it makes Eagle Warriors significantly worse in these matchup. Knight engagement there for, uh, for the Viper as well. Uh, we'll get these skirmishes. Uh, at least he's gonna try. Veles splitting up a skirm for now. Viper killing the the, the the full HP one first because the weak one can be killed by the, by the archers. Yeah, it's looking so good for the Viper. Veles clicks up though, two minutes away, but Viper already encapsulates and you know knights are about to come out. But Veles dropping barracks now, so it's gonna be uh, you know, a spike eagle something. But it, remember, against Sicilian knights, they're just so good at that. So good at that. As Veles probably finding out now there's a hole. Finding out now there's a hole. Probably a good thing to find out about that now. Rather than later when the knights show up at your base. And those knights are on their way. They will have some armor and bloodlines. Aye, 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 aye. I mean, Viper is all in knights right now. He is all in knights in theory. Because he sold all his stone. But that doesn't have to be permanent. Yeah, barracks going up now. Viper is aware of that. He sees the, the barracks go up. And I guess it's going to be eagles for Veles. But oh boy, oh boy. 
Now, I mean, it is possible, right? It is possible to beat knights with eagles, but Sicilian knights might be the most difficult knights to kill uh, for an eagle sieve. Just because they don't get that bonus damage. I mean, Magyar Knights are kind of a, kind of difficult as well because they get the attack upgrade for free, so they're always really strong. But it, you know, the Sicilian Knights get even worse when they have that attack upgrade and they take less bonus damage. Uh, there's no hole. Good. Valesh is gonna have to keep himself a little bit safe as knights are trying to break in from all sides. But okay, this is good. This is good. Yes, yes. Get some monasteries out. That's good. Two monasteries to get a lot of monks out at the same time. That is good. Good stuff there. Uh, you know, eagle warrior upgrade coming in as well makes the eagle scouts a lot stronger. Valesh is going to try to keep the knights out as much as he can, but we're walling. You're repairing against it, only barely keeping it up with two villages right now. Bit of idle time for him in that regard. Now, even though it doesn't count as idle time, but I would call it idle time because it's not re collecting resources or building. It's repairing. Yeah, Viper on seven knights already. He's just going to slowly add more knights, but also on a second TC. So he just bought, he actually just mined some stone then, uh, or bought some stone. I'm not sure what it was. I didn't pay attention to that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on two towns. So he's not even all in anymore. He's not even all in. Veles technically is all in now. Now, as long as he doesn't uh, drop down centers, he's still all in. He would be really all in if he buys, uh, if he sells the stone, that is. He's going to keep walling out the knights. Now, now Viper sees the monks, at least. He sees the, the monastery, so he knows. I mean, he knew that it was monks. As for less. Huh? What? Wait, what was that? What, did he just delete his monastery? How? Why? Huh. Interesting. Okay. That's kind of weird. You know, if you want to delete a monastery, you actually get an error message as well, right? As Vles not going to build another one in the front. Um, okay. Um, that's... I was, I'm was. i kind of slightly confused by that one, but alrighty. Well, Vles is going to be going forward now with eagles, with monks. That's a pretty strong combination. We have Viper on three DCs now. He's just going to boom, add economy, and not take damage and defend. That's uh, going to be the plan for now. Now, there is a great hill for Vales to push from. This hill is a great, uh, you know, it's really nice. You deny the stone. You also have a nice uh, shot at the early DC. The gold is right beyond that. The stables are here. You can destroy those. So... Yeah, definitely a great position uh, to push from with eagles and with monks. The only, only thing you need now is a villager forward and some seeds. Let's see, is the villager coming forward? I think so. Probably. That villager might come forward then. Uh, it shouldn't because it's weak, but it might. Yeah, look how little damage these eagles do. I mean, three eagles barely killing a knight there. Very nice. The Veles also dropping another TC as well at this at, at his gold. That is very important as well. You don't want to be all in in this regard. Not against a Sicilian player who is booming big time right now. You have to get stay. You have to keep up with the vill count somehow. It is forty-seven villages for Veles, fifty-nine for the Viper, who has gotten some idle time as TCs. But yet again, when you have three TCs working, that's pretty good. It's all oh, the Viper striking at the supply routes here with the knight. The Veles barely walling in his villager here, so he can get a market up to sell and buy some some other stuff. Uh, I guess if he didn't do that already. As conversions coming in, one conversion coming in for Veles, very nice on the Sicilian Knight there. The Eagles do it, you know, Eagles starting to reach a nice number of uh, of units as well. I mean, Eagles, again, is a unit that you need to mass. Lots of Eagles do the trick, though. But again, almost a 20 villager lead for Viper. I mean, it's 15 villagers now, but he's getting closer and closer. He's also making a whole lot of knights right now, because he realizes I need to also be able to protect myself a little bit. And, oh, Veles now getting redemption, so... But he hasn't seen any seeds yet from the Viper. That's an expensive upgrade, by the way. That's 400 gold. That's a lot of gold. You can make a lot of eagles with that. Um, how many? Someone else did the math. <laughs> uh, it's 36. Six. You can get six eagles with that. Six. Six and a half. As here come the Eagles, we'll have the second armor upgrade as well, which is very important in the fight against the Knights. You do need some melee armor, of course, after all, because you don't really have a very high stat at that. But it also uh, helps you fight under town centers even more so than it, than it does now. Viper countering from the left, though, looking for a way into Valesa's base. Uh, oh, is it eight? I thought uh, Eagles are 60 gold, right? So 400 gold, and you get like six and a half, right? Or am I, am I wrong on that? 
And say, so here come the eagles. The eagles are coming. And Viper's army is not here. It's trying to counter in Valesha's base. It does make it into Valesha's base. Now Valesha's knights in his base. Uh, they are 50 gold. Oh, really? I always thought they were 60 gold. Okay, then it's 8. Yeah, then it's 8. Yep, you're right. You're totally right. Valesha getting a bunch. Actually, not that many eagle kills. Actually, Viper getting the same number of eagle kills himself. Valesha defending for now with a monk. Gets a conversion. Viper... He's spending a lot of night. Oh, he has knights in the back of Valesha's base. And Valesha's army is forward. It's forward. He can't deal with this. And Viper's just going to raid and raid. And Valesha, no. Oh, God. The slaughter. Valesha is on multiple TCs. But you cannot hide so many villagers in there. All these TCs are full. Like I said, this is a deadly game of of, uh, of the chair. Of chairs. or I'm not actually sure what the... Musical chairs. That's the word. That's the term. Deadly game of musical chairs. Oh, my God. And Valesi Stryl is still trying to raid around with eagles as well, but it's only 13 eagles for now. Most of his economy is idle. Lots of knights all the way. And Valesi says, GG, good luck next, and taps out. And Viper, after a very strong performance today in the quarterfinals, is going to go to the semifinals, which is the expected result. But man, he also, I mean, he still has to show up and actually play well, and that he did. He played like a beast. Viper in, in top shape right now, and G to the G. Yeah, and then not to take away from what is doing, Valesha's playing awesomely as well, you know. Playing awesome, and again, I say that to every player, he would whoop, the, whoop my ass easily, would whoop the ass of most players, uh, you know, in Age of Empires community. And making it to the final eight is a good result for Veles. And I mean, you go down against one of the best players in the world. That's never a shameful thing. So GG's for Veles as well. Good play. And especially the first game was really good. It was really good. Great aggression there. Yeah, Viper just... This is what Viper does best. Booming and not taking any damage whatsoever. Like, look at that. Both Valesh and Viper had a moment running in with military. Look at this. 16 eagle kills for the Viper. 4 for Valesh. It's just... You do, this, you do the exact same thing. Throwing your military right in your opponent's base. And yet this snake gets a lot of kills and you don't. It's just... It's not fair. It's not fair. But it's the game. It's uh, really well done. Yeah. GG's all around. Have a quick look at the statistics there, but of course the game was uh, it wasn't too long actually, so there's probably not a whole lot of statistics there. Yeah, KD much better for the Viper. Sicilians versus Incas, I would definitely favor Sicilians anyways. Yeah, Sicilians and Incas just do not really have uh, uh, have, uh, have a good answer there. Uh, you, you must be talking about Kamayuk. Are they a hard counter to knights? Yes and no. I mean, for one, you need to produce them from a castle, which is kind of a problem. They are stronger than pikemen, for sure. They have more range as well. If you stack them, it's very difficult to kill with knights. So yeah, I would definitely not suggest engaging against Kamayuk with knights. I would say a hard counter. But, of course, because they, you have to produce them from castles, it takes a while to get there. And it's also not... It's difficult to produce a whole lot of them. And they do die to archers uh, quite a bit. So knights can just run away then. But yeah, in a, in a 1v1 engagement, knights should definitely die to Kamayuk. Even Sicilian Knights probably died at that, but I'm not sure exactly. It depends on how much bonus damage they do. I mean, I mean, I haven't really seen Kamayuk that much in 1v1, so it would be hard for me to say that. But if you, if you play Castle Blood Automatic CBA, if one player has uh, Incas, therefore gets Kamayuk at the start of the game, and you're up against them with a Cavalry Sieve, uh, you're not going to have a fun time. So uh, definitely, yeah, Kamayuk definitely OP if you mash them like that. So... Uh, Unfortunately for Valesh, he was never able to get there. You know, he would still have to get a castle up. And if Viper sees the, he sees the camera, he'll just switch into Arbalest himself. You know, that's the, that's the thing with the Sicilians. They have a lot of options. Yeah, more resources collected for the Viper. Higher will count as well. A better, a, 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 you know, castle time as well. Because he sold his resource. And then selling it first gets the most advantage from it. And Valesh actually didn't do that. So yeah. In the end. In the end. Congratulations to the Viper to being the last player to join the fourth, uh, the, the the best of four there. The semifinals, which will be happening next week, obviously, uh, you know, on a Saturday, I think, in the weekend. So that's going to be really good as well. I will be casting that, obviously. So you're always welcome to come and join me again. Uh, anyways, but yeah, congratulations to the Viper. Good luck for next round, of course. And of course, good luck and GG's to Veles uh, for the next tournament because he played like a beast and he deserved to be in the quarterfinals. I'm so sorry to see him go, of course. Hey, at this point, any any match is a heartbreaker. You don't want to see players lose, but and there has to be one victor. There has there can be only one.